Welcome to Capital One Bowl Mania. Christmas Eve day in the Bahamas. The folks from Central Michigan and Western Kentucky said, absolutely. The mission of the Popeyes Bahamas Bowl is to promote the islands of the Bahamas and in turn promote educational and athletic opportunities to the youth of the Bahamas through college football. And we are ready to go. Welcome to ESPN's coverage of Capital One Bowl Mania and the 2014 Popeyes Bahamas Bowl. Central Michigan, the Chippewas out of the MAC take on the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky at a conference USA. And with that, we say a very pleasant good afternoon and happy holidays. Look, if you haven't finished your Christmas shopping by now, what's another three, three and a half hours? With Mark May and Lou Holtz, fellas, we're going to see a great football game here today. No one in the nation threw more touchdown passes than Brendan Dowdy this season. And Brendan Dowdy's done a terrific job under first-year coach Jeff Brom of picking up the offense. And what he's really done is he cut down on the turnovers. Last year he threw 14 interceptions. This year just 10 interceptions. But what's key, he's thrown 44 touchdown passes and over 4,400 yards in passing yards. And look at this comparison. He's got better statistics than a guy called Marcus Whoa. Mariota that won the Heisman Trophy. More than six touchdown and six touchdown passes and over 500 yards, more passing yards than Marcus Mariota. He can spin the magic bean. Keep an eye on him tonight. Does a terrific job of moving his feet around in the pocket and throwing the ball vertically. He gets the ball out of his hand in a hurry. Looking forward to seeing the passing attack and the total offense of Western Kentucky, sixth in offense in the country. Then there's Central Michigan, coach. <laughs> they go three tight ends, two backs. They actually huddle up. <laughs> what a what a shame. Well, what's amazing, you have two great young coaches that know how to win, but they go about it completely different. You mentioned Western Michigan throws the ball over. I want to tell you, Central Michigan would make Woody Hayes proud in his three yards at Cloud of Dust. I mean, it's going to be a fantastic game between two different philosophies. A contrast in styles indeed. And it's history as well. Get ready for the inaugural Popeyes Bahamas Bowl. It's coming up next on ESPN. Back in Nassau, the Bahamas, where Atlantis overshadows everything here. We welcome you back to Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium. Central Michigan has a fine, fine rushing attack but it won't be on display today. Down of the field, fourth member of our crew. Here's Laura Rutledge. Thanks, Steve. And yeah, Central Michigan will be without their leading rusher, running back Thomas Rawls today, because he was being held out of the game due to an academic issue. And head coach Dan Enos wanted to make it clear that he feels this was not Rawls' fault. Rawls, in fact, came to Central Michigan after graduating from the University of Michigan in just three years. So we're hearing that running back Sailor Lavalli will get the start. He's a hard runner between the tackles. And then true freshman Devin Spaulding will get the majority of the carries. He's good outside the tackles. Also, they have their third down back, Martez Walker, who can catch the ball out of the backfield. Now, coaches tell us, Steve, no matter what happens, they're going to ride the hot hand. All three will play, and then whoever's feeling it will get the most carries. All right, Laura, we'll watch for that. Thank you. I thought what Coach Eno said about Rawls is just about the highest compliment a coach can give a player when he said, I'd let him watch my kids for the weekend. Well, you graduate from Michigan in three years, <laughs> you aren't going to have academic problems. There had to be some foul up somewhere. I don't know where. He's a terrific young man. As we were talking, as you said, to Coach Eno, he, he, he let him watch his kids. But not only that, he's a leader on the team. He had a chance to address the team, and he let him do that before the team left for the Bahamas. All right, we're ready for football. Central Michigan defers Western Kentucky to receive. Ron Caluzzi will put it in the air. Kylan Towner and Willie McNeil are back deep. And we'll start with a touchback. And that's how we'll open up. And we'll start with the singular offensive star in the game that is Brandon Dowdy the senior from Davie Florida and those 44 touchdown passes this season to lead the country and he's done a terrific job of picking up this offense and really moving it along because he had a different head coach last year it was a different system what they did is they made sure they could put him in a, in a system that he could prosper in and he's going to get rid of the ball in a hurry all right first down and ten 
Opening at the 25, Leon Allen is their fine back. And that pass looked like it was batted down at the line of scrimmage. Blake Serpa, the junior out of Sugar Grove, Illinois, able to deflect the pass away to bring up second down. When you throw the ball an awful lot, you don't like to see a 20 mile an hour win, which is what Western Kentucky's headed into. The kicking game will be interesting because of that wind, Coach, and also short uprights here in the Bahamas. We'll watch for that. Now trying to create some space for himself and lofted it out, and it's caught. A fine catch by Leon Allen, their star running back, who's great in the running game and passing game. And what a fabulous job of concentration and coming down with the football by Leon Allen. Yes, he comes out of the backfield, but a one-handed stab, sticks it up there, brings it down to himself. He's got over 400 receiving yards on the season. Dowdy showing some good mobility there. Brings up a first down as they move the chains, and it's Allen this time showing off the legs. Kevin King brought him down. If there's one thing a Central Michigan must do is make Western Kentucky one-dimensional. Let him throw the ball, but don't let him make yard he's running. Here's Allen again on second and seven. Gets it out just about to the 40-yard line. Put him in a first third down situation. Western Kentucky converted 50% on third down this season. Allen, the lone setback to the left of Dowdy. On third and four. He's looking that way and finds him and has the first down and just out across the midfield. Allen on the receiving end there. Tony Anise came up to make the stop, but it was too late after the gain of nine. Offensive coordinator Tyson Helton does a terrific job of coaching this quarterback and getting rid of the ball. I mentioned that earlier. It's important to get it out of his hands. He doesn't want to sit on the ball. He doesn't want to take sacks. He wants to move the football and move the chains. Right at midfield, Anthony Wales has checked in now for Western Kentucky. Off the play action. Looks like Dowdy wanted it deep. And came down to Mitchell Henry, could not come up with a catch. Henry, the best all-around tight end on the Hilltoppers. Ladies and gentlemen, one thing you want to be aware of, how many yards Western Kentucky makes after the catch. Third down and six, the pass was completed behind the line of scrimmage. He ran nine yards after he caught it. That is the key to Western Kentucky's success. Missed tackles talked about by both coaching staffs coming into this game. Wales still in there. Here's Dowdy out of the gut. This time we'll hand it to Wales up the middle. A little change of pace there. And he's inside the 45. Jared Chapman finally brought him down. A terrific job by the interior offensive line, particularly the left guard and center of getting to the second level and getting movement on the defensive front of the Chippewas. Third down and three. Against the Central Michigan defense, their opponents converted on 38% for the season. What's the right number there, guys? What's, if you're an offense, 50 you take 50% for sure. Absolutely. Oh, right, What's yeah. the defensive number? What's oh, the right uh, number? 30 is great. 30 is fantastic. All right, on third and three, here's Dowdy. They protect him well, and they swing it around to Jared Dangerfield, who is their third down converter. He's their clutch receiver. He's got him another first down. You gotta like Dangerfield. Here's a guy who's a junior college transfer, steps on campus in the spring, huge spring game. Big physical wide receiver, six foot three, over 200 pounds, has 64 receptions on the season. When he catches the ball, coach, he knows what to do with it. Now, no, once again, there's a four yard pass and a 14 yard run after the catch. And another fresh set of downs at the 25. Here's Dowdy. He'll check it down again. And it's Nicholas Norris on the receiving end of a very short gain, and he paid the price for it there. If Central Michigan cannot put pressure on the passer, it's going to be a long day. And not only that, going into the wind, they're using up the clock, Mark. Second down and eight now. Two receivers out to the left. Dowdy's looking that way the whole way and just snuck it through to Leon Allen. That was very nearly intercepted, if not bad, at least batted away. I think that ball went right through the defender's hands. That, that's how close it was. But what a terrific job of throwing the ball with accuracy where he wants to throw it. He looks to the right, throws to the left, right through the defender's fingertips for the reception and another first down. On first and 10 now, about the 15. 
Here's Dowdy again. Great pocket for him. End zone. Touchdown. It's Jared Dangerfield. His team leading 11th touchdown of the season. It's for 14 yards in the score. And the Hilltoppers take the early lead on their first drive. The Hilltoppers have seven receivers that have 29 receptions with more marks. So he has a lot of people can catch a great double move by the young man. Not only that, how about the touch of Brandon Dowdy, the quarterback, of arcing that ball just enough to know that his big six foot three receiver could get it in front of the defender? Boy, let's credit the offensive line for Western Kentucky. Great protection. Garrett Schwetman, the junior, on for the extra point attempt. And again, the upright two are short, but he splits them cleanly. Jared Dangerfield, Mr. Clutch. A lot of third down conversions and a lot of touchdowns. Fine, fine start for Brandon Dowdy and company. I'm Dick Lynch, Chief Brand Officer of Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen. On behalf of our franchisees and employees worldwide, we welcome you to the 2014 Popeye's Bahamas Bowl. And I'm Ruby Wilshkin, Bahamas Minister of Tourism. On behalf of our wonderful nation, we welcome you to the beautiful islands of the Bahamas for today's game. We're proud to present today's Popeye's Bahamas Bowl here in Nassau, and we invite you to love that chicken from Popeye's. And we're proud to display our tremendous hospitality to the world. We hope you visit us soon, and as we say, it's better in the Bahamas. Yeah, they don't have to try to sell this place too hard. It sort of sells itself. Uh -oh. All you have to do is mention the name Bahamas. Right. Uh, paradise indeed. Mark's been here for about three weeks now. <laughs> Has it been that long? I'm not uh, going back. <laughs> he has a citizenship. He's been here so long. I've got to get back so I can start my Christmas shopping. All right, here's something you don't see often. The two kick returners for Central Michigan, Courtney Williams and Amari Coleman, look where they're standing, guys. They're at the 15-yard line. Yeah, well, they're kicking into a win. Plus, they aren't real strong on their kickoff uh, as far as Western Kentucky. Mike Mudler, that's all he does is do the kickoffs. And that kickoff drops at the 18. And they have to run up and try to corral it. it looked like the ball was loose and it went out of bounds. The ball gets up in the air, Mark, and it gets caught by the wind and the receiver cannot judge that very well. That's very difficult. It definitely is for the receiving team. You've got to make sure that you keep your eyes on the ball and run up to the ball in this situation. And going into this, you know that their kicker can't keep it, kick it deep. If they don't push kick it like this, they either squib kick it because they don't have a kicker strong enough to kick it into the end zone. Amari Coleman was the player who got to the football and able to shovel it out of bounds. Cooper Rush is the quarterback, a young man. A quiet young man, <laughs> sophomore out of Charlotte, Michigan. Dowdy gets off to the great start. Six of eight, 62 yards, and a touchdown pass. We'll see if Cooper Rush can match him. As Laura mentioned, Sailor Lavalli starts in the backfield, but Rush comes out firing and completing to Titus Davis. And Davis yards after catch. Davis advances all the way inside the of Western Kentucky before Dijon Brown brought him down. It's a gain of 45 on the first play from scrimmage. <laughs> Very well designed play action pass. That's why Titus Davis is one of the best wide receivers in college football. He's the first player in FBS history to have eight touchdown receptions in four consecutive years. And here, you can see he breaks away from the defender and picks up the extra yardage for the Chippewas. So that'll flip the field right away. Lavalli stays in there as the single setback. Here's Rush on the center, and he'll hand it off to Lavalli. And he finds a seam up the middle, and he's very close to another first down. The offensive line has 142 starts among them. And not only that, Central Michigan, Mark, returns 20 starters from last year's team. Dan Enos has done a terrific job. He recruits a lot in the state of Michigan. He keeps a lot of homegrown talent there. A lot of big home growth. Yeah, big lineman. <laughs> big lineman is right. Second and two, they'll call it. From at the 22 yard line. Here's Rush looking to throw for it. End zone got a man. Was he in bounds? Wow. Yes, touchdown. It's Titus Davis. Well, let's see now. If it stands, it's 21 yards and six points. Only need one foot. 
Wow, that's a great job of concentrating on the ball. One-handed catch, the defender had his hand on his left arm, took it away from the defender, caught the ball, has it there. Nice job. How about that answer from the Chippewas? <laughs> the play-action passing. Notice that Western Kentucky drops back, not Central Michigan. All play action. Brian Eby pumps it through. And that's the kind of college football we like to see. Two series, two touchdowns. And the receiver Titus Davis is one of the best in the country and probably the best receiver in the MAC. He's done a terrific job throughout his career. That's his 56th reception. That's his 10th touchdown reception. And the way that he catches the ball and advances it all the time, he's got a future at the next level. Well, Central Michigan, we showed, we showed you the weather forecast for today. This is how Central Michigan told their players which bowl they were going to. They put this on the screen. You can see on the left, that's the player's reaction. Here's the big dramatic countdown. And when it's revealed that it would, in fact, be the Popeye's Bahamas Bowl, <laughs> check out the reaction <laughs> from the guys. Oh, that's great. That's, that's what college football's all about. That's awesome. That was nothing to how I celebrated when I found out I was doing the game. <laughs> More excited they were. As you see, we're making some history here as well, dating back to 1937, the Bacardi Bowl in Havana. All right, with the way things are changing now, maybe there'll be another bowl game there soon, too. What a start to this one. And that video, from that went viral on Twitter. I mean, it just exploded all over the place. Great reaction. With all due respect to playing a bowl game in Detroit yes. this time of year. But, but this is a great experience for these kids. A lot of these kids have never traveled outside of the country, maybe never will again. And this is an opportunity to, to visit a different country and a different culture and do some things that they never thought they'd imagine that they would do in their lifetime. Just getting a passport's different. <laughs> That's 35, I think, for I learned what a passport was. Hey, you get a charge with that first stamp in your passport. <laughs> oh, boy. That's a big deal. That's a thrill. All right. Brandon Dowdy, it's your turn. Quarterbacks off to a fine start. Couple of long touchdown passes. On first down, Leon Allen will try the left side on for size. He's got some good running room. And he'll bring up a second and short. Jared Chapman finally brought him down. I really like the way Leon Allen plays. He has that downhill lean when he runs the football. You know, he's only one of two backs in the nation that has over 1,400 yards rushing and over 400 receiving yards. Coach, do you know who the other one is? Uh, I'm counting on you to tell me, like always. Jay so, Ajani so from Boise State. On second and one, that just went off the hands of Antoine Grant. Antoine, who goes by Twain, had missed the last three games coming off a high ankle sprain. They weren't sure if he's going to be able to go, and he couldn't hang on to that. Would have had the first down. Have you ever had a back that you've coached that's been that productive, that type of back that can catch the ball and, and, and run with it? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Here's third down and one. They keep it on the ground. Allen's got the one, and then a whole lot more across midfield. And finally brought down on the 37-yard line. Anise got there, but not in enough time. Another big-time run by Allen, Coach. Uh, big-time run right there. But a missed tackle. And what's happening is they want to run the ball to slow down the pass rush for Central Michigan. Anthony Wales checks in. He'll give Allen a breather. Here's Dowdy. Move the pocket, slide it to the right, and throw on the run. And that pass is caught, completed. It's Nicholas Norris who comes up with his second catch of the afternoon. Talking to head coach Jeff Brom and offensive coordinator Tyson Helton yesterday, they worked on his confidence. Not only that, and his footwork. They know that he's not going to run a 4 7 40 or 4 6 40, but he's able to move the pocket. And once he moves the pocket, he's accurate throwing the football downfield. Go two backs now, and we see Dowdy under center. And he'll flip it to Wales. Able to turn the corner. Got plenty of real grass in front of him. And he's slammed out by Jackson, Jason Wilson, I beg your pardon, at the 12 yard line. Put a good lick on him. There you see, notice how many missed tackles you have in a bowl game because you're not used to tackling with each other. <laughs> Both coaches talked about the importance of tackling. Maybe should have talked a little bit more. 
to the players. <laughs> yeah, they, so they the told players. us about it. They tackle a little bit more. Hey practice. guys, here's Dowdy. Look Lots at this pocket. Look at this protection. And throws underneath to Joel German. And German is in for the touchdown. Was somebody mentioning something about yards after catch and yards after I, I, contact? Nobody beats you throwing a catch, and they beat you because they run after. But I tell you, Dowdy, I saw him against Marshall. 59 points in 60 minutes regular season. He's just had a fantastic year. Well, that was Joe Tumpkins' big concern, the defensive coordinator for the Chippewas. He said, got to prevent the yards after the catch. And uh, he's having a nightmare start, his defensive unit here. Schwetman back on for the extra point. A couple of long, long scoring drives for Western Kentucky. And the extra point is good. We haven't even played, well, just over sit around seven minutes played. We got three touchdowns already. Sure do. At the Popeyes Bahamas goal. Come on back for some more scoring. The 2014 Popeyes Bahamas Bowl is brought to you by Popeyes Louisiana Kitchen, proud sponsor of the inaugural Popeyes Bahamas Bowl. The Venture Card from Capital One. Earn unlimited double miles you can use with no blackout dates. And Chevrolet, find new roads. Fill it up, big boy. I'm not sure that plate can hold anymore. <laughs> he, may need, he may need two more plates for that Get size. yourself enough, <laughs> Whoa. a bigger plate. Come on, man. Plate's got to break. <laughs> Great scoring so far in this one. We've had three possessions, three touchdowns. Western Kentucky scoring on an 11-play drive and then a six-play drive. Central Michigan about to get the football back. Their scoring drive was all of three plays. All three scoring drives for 75 yards. Again, the receivers, uh, they're even shorter now. I think they were the 15 last time. How about the 18? Mike Mugler will kick it off again into the wind, but kickoffs uh, have been an issue. Win here. And picked up at the 20 by Courtney Williams. Williams found a little bit of a seam there, and it gets out to about the 39. So Central Michigan will have fine field position to start. Capital One Bowl Mania continues tonight. Fresno State squares off against Rice in the Hawaii Bowl. That's tonight, 8 Eastern on ESPN. Of course, former WAC opponents dating back to 1996 through 2005. It was only a year ago the three of us were at the Hawaii Bowl. Absolutely. Great and, bowl. And they were talking about the inaugural Bahamas Bowl. We thought, hey, that might be nice to try. I, I, and here we are. Oh, it does get any better than this. That's the power of Dr. Lou. <laughs> Lou, where are we going next year, by the way? <laughs> We're going to Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> All right, big tackle and a rare loss in the game. Dijon Brown, the coveted Juco transfer from Beaumont, California, made the stop. Is that our first loss of the game? First losing play, losing yardage play of the game so far. So this is one of the things when we talked to defensive coordinator Nick Holt, he said they practice hard on tackling because he knew that this would be a physical game the way that they can run the football. And right there, that was one of those plays where he said, we're not going to tackle them every time like we want to, but when we do tackle them, we're going to make sure we bring everything with it. On second and 14 after the loss. That pass is batted up and nearly intercepted. Cooper Rush's pass was deflected in the secondary. Taron Williams, or Chill, if you will, able to make the tip. Oh, he goes by Chill. Nice job of watching the football, watching the quarterback's eyes. You're seeing the lane he's trying to throw to and getting to that spot and knocking it away. Williams does go by Chill since birth. He said he's never, ever heard a single family member call him Taron. Not once <laughs> ever. You would think by accident you would slip up at some point and you're mad at him or something. No, he's chill all the time. That pass, what a dime. With all due respect to Trent Dilfer, Cooper Rush firing it in there and Jesse Kroll on the receiving end. When they talk about Cooper Rush, uh, he has a 3.91 average. He was second team academic All-American. I think that is a great honor. That's the volumes about that young man. He's only a sophomore. Actuarial science. Who doesn't love that, huh? You know, I tell you, boy, the insurance companies <laughs> love him. Translate well to the quarterback position. Right? <laughs> you know, they, they tell you exactly who's going to, how many are going to die. They just can't tell you who. 
risk and reward. Devin Spaulding gets his first carry of the game. He's the true freshman out of Westland, Michigan. Nick Holt came up to make the stop. They love the three linebackers on that Western Kentucky defense. Brown, Holt, and Williams, Chill. They really play those three predominantly. I think they love Nick a little more, especially since his dad is Nick also, the defensive coordinator. He's had a spectacular season. 103 tackles on the year. He's had five games where he's had 10 tackles or more. You don't know how hard it is to play for your dad. Ask my son, Skip. <laughs> That's a great point. Rush able to just get that through. The leaping arms of the defender. Again, it's Titus Davis on another big play, and they'll move the chains. Uh, yesterday when we talked to Nick Holt, the defensive coordinator, we said, hey, your son's had a terrific year. What was the first thing he said? He missed some tackles. <laughs> Didn't say, oh, he, he does a great job tackling or sideline to sideline or he reads the fullback well or he reads the quarterback. He missed a bunch of tackles. He had to be nice, though, because his wife was there. Yes. And you don't say anything <laughs> negative about the mother's son. <laughs> first down and 10 now at the 31. Spaulding remains the tailback. And here's Rush under center. Off the play action, pressure up the middle. Rush avoids the rush, Whoa. takes a big hit as he throws, and it should have been intercepted in the end zone. How was that not picked off by Prince Charles Owara? But there is a flag down I as think, Rush took a big shot. I think it's going to be roughing the passer. Neck area of a defenseless player. 15 yard penalty, and number 31 is disqualified for the remainder of the game. This play is now under review. Wow. So Taron Williams, or Chill, who we just talked about, one of the three irreplaceable linebackers, has been ejected for the game. Well, we'll get a chance to see this probably multiple times. And right here, Cooper rushes outside of the pocket, delivers it right in the face mask. He didn't launch till the very end there, but that's definitely the form of the face mask. I, it ain't going to take him long to review it. Yeah. Helmet and form to yeah, the face yeah, mask. Yeah, yeah, you hate to see that. I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, take the face mask off the helmet. We won't see that anymore. He's got to leave the field now. And Williams is a senior, guys. And that's so unfortunate for a player like that, a senior coming over here, bowl game, the end of your career, the last game you're going to play as a collegiate player for Western Kentucky University in the first quarter to have something like that happen. You, you, you've got to be mentally more in the game and more responsible at that. At Life that is a matter of choices. When you choose to launch, you're choosing not to play. The officials from the American Athletic Conference, the referee John McDade with the bad news for Chill Williams. He's gone. And when I say gone, you gone. see him, you see him yes. headed for the door. Lavalli <laughs> is the setback. Joe Bacci is the fullback. And they hand it off to Lavalli, the second man through. So Rush appears to be okay after taking the big shot up high. What has really surprised me so far is Western Kentucky is controlling the line of scrimmage against that veteran offensive line. And that Central Michigan has got to rely on movement up front, and they aren't getting them, Mark. They need to concentrate on running the ball more and trying to wear them down. They've thrown the ball a lot early in this first quarter. Chippewas have started the same five players on the offensive line all season. That is a rarity at any level of football these days. Rush takes a hit again and is intercepted. A juggling pass intercepted Cam Thomas, and he's going to run it out of the end zone. So Rush, who should have been intercepted when he was belted on the ejection, that wouldn't have counted anyway. This one does count. But watch, he catches a deflection. It isn't a clear interception. Looks like Leston got his hands on it first, and then Thomas gets the pick. One.
one of the features of the Atlantis, the water slide. We talked to some of the players about their favorite moments. And they love the water slide. All the players we asked, this was their number one ride. Hey, Coach, how many times did you go down the water slide? <laughs> yeah, hell, I go to go down the first time, next time. <laughs> did you try the abyss, right? That's no, the one yeah, we all love, right? What, he, was, he was afraid of that one. I was busy preparing for the game. I never left my room. <laughs> my wife's got to believe that. You were out sunning on the beach the other day. I saw you. I was. Kyle Towner on the receiving end there. There is so much to do here, ladies and gentlemen. I strongly urge you to come here. If you get through customs, you're going to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going down that road. So customs was a bit of a struggle. <laughs> not for me. But it's, it's an unbelievable place. It's worth it. On second down and nine after the short game. Again, good pocket, good completion, and a nice job by Grant able to hang on to the football in heavy traffic. I and our second roughing the passer call of the game. Well, you don't get pressure on him, and you get frustrated when you get there, and you don't make a good choice. And it's tough to get the quarterback, Brandon Dowdy, because he gets rid of the ball so fast and he'll move the pocket around. He's got great feet. He's got receivers that catch the ball. And they're deep at the receiver position of guys that can get the ball. Jeff Brom and his staff have done a great job with this offense, averaging 44 points a game. Tack on the 15 yards, the automatic first down out at the 42. Put some air under that wow, and if he couldn't have gotten it to Allen, he might have run forever. Here's the roughing the passer. That's Lewis Palmer got flagged for roughing the passer. I, you can't hit him in the head. You yeah. can hit him in the shoulders, you can hit him in the chest, you can I, hit I, him in the you can't go anything above the shoulders. Second down and ten now. Three receivers to the left. And Dowdy, of course, is going to the right. And he's got his man for a big game. It's Taewon Taylor, their speedster, and leading receiver in terms of receiving yards. Tax on another one. That's good for 28. It was a 10-yard pass and 18-yard run. Another opportunity. They've got to make the tackle on the first defender. If you don't, these receivers will spin out of that. They're strong enough and get the additional yardage. Inside handoff to Leon Allen, and he stumbles forward. We send it down to Laura Rutherford. Well, Steve, throughout this first quarter, Coach Brom over here on the Western Kentucky sideline has been encouraging his quarterback, Brandon Dowdy, telling him, remember, play with swagger. And one of the things that Brom told us is that Brandon really responds to that encouragement. That's what helps him play better. He's a guy that you have to coach that way. And as we know, every guy has to be coached differently. Coach, you've seen it through the years, right? Some uh, guys like the kick in the pants, uh, others uh, don't uh, take to uh, it. You know, Tony Rice's son is a wide receiver for the Central Michigan. If you didn't get all over him, he didn't think you paid any attention. Somebody else, you know, you had to be very, very nice to him. Like who, like a Rick Meyer type quarterback? Uh, Rick Meyer was, you know, he, he didn't respond well to criticism, but he was a wonderful quarterback and a wonderful man. On third and six, they've conver converted all three of their first down opportunities, and there's another first down. They get four for four on third down conversions. That's Uncle Willie on the receiving end. The oldest player on the team, they call Willie McNeil, Uncle Willie. Uncle Willie did another great job of catching the ball with his hands, turning downfield, picking up the extra yardage. It's got to be frustrating for Western Michigan. This is the number one total defense in the MAC, and they can't slow down this Western Kentucky University offense. They've never seen anybody like this offense in the back. Screen it out again to Allen, and he's cracked down at the 10-yard line. And also, it's got to be frustrating the pace. We talked to Latarius Walton, the defensive nose tackle for Central Michigan. He said he loves the pace. He said he wants to get out there. He enjoys it. Here's a player that was 325 pounds last year, lost 25 pounds, is in great shape, and he says he enjoys going against these up-tempo type offenses. Yep, hand in the dirt. Let's go do it again. Yep. <laughs> Here's Dowdy, turn to the corner himself. And Dowdy's out of the five. There is a flag on the play. Even though there's a flag, it's probably going to be holding. Number 62 of the offense. Ten-yard penalty, second down. And it's it Darryl is Darryl Williams, the right guard. But the thing that's imp impressive about me is watch the feet of Dowdy. 
He's going to make something happen with his feet. There's a hole to grab right there on 56, but he does a great job. He's not going to run 30, 40 yards down the field, but he's going to take the ball forward down the field and get positive yards. Boy, that was a flagrant hold. That wasn't that bad. <laughs> oh, he has offensive Says the lineman. offensive lineman. He has offensive lineman. <laughs> <laughs> that was a close call. Second and 14 after they pick up the marker. Split out Allen to the right, bottom of your screen. Dowdy looking into the end zone. He's got his man. Touchdown. They're going to call the touchdown. Twain Grant, they're going to say he broke the plane for another score and the third touchdown pass of the game for Dowdy. Very poor reaction by the defensive back. A great job of standing tall in the pocket by Dowdy. Does a terrific job visually looking down the field. Look at standing tall, throws the ball vertically down the field to play. And here's the catch. He's in. I think he broke the plane. Yeah. It's tough to see from that angle, but it looks like when he spun around, the ball broke the plane. The official on the goal line did not hesitate at all. They're taking a look at it right now. The, the viewers back home, 12 football game. Right there from that angle, it's hard, but watch where the ball is, where the ball breaks the plane. And he's on the sidelines, he calls it a touchdown. It's gonna to be tough to overturn. Yeah, my, my feelings is, hey, give it to him anyway. They're gonna give it first down. Hey, let's move on, let's, okay. Well, I'm sure you did that when you were a coach. Oh, oh yeah. that's all right. First and goal on the one foot yard, just give it to hey, him. Hey, they're gonna make it anyway, let's move on. How was the instant replay system when you were coaching, coach? Yeah, uh, wait, wait, on my film, when I looked at the film on Monday. And I'll tell you what, you found and made more mistakes and the commissioner would say, we apologize, but you can't say anything and we're going to find you. And but. folks, you at home are seeing what they're seeing in the replay booth as well. And it will stand. The call on the field, the initial call was touchdown, and it will, it will stand. Dowdy has three touchdown passes. 12 games, 11 of the games, they scored a minimum of 34 points. I mean, unbelievably consistent. Dowdy stays on the field. Here's the holder for the extra point, 12. And Garrett Schwetmont boots it through. Well, we've got four touchdowns in the game, two roughing the passers, one ejection. Come on back, 30 second break here. Thirty seconds later, as promised, back at the Popeyes Bahamas Bowl. How many pieces of chicken did you have for breakfast, Mark? Tell the truth. Three. Uh, there were wings. Not little a wings. Right, I had four. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome, though. Lou, did you partake? The new ghost oh, pepper yeah. by Popeyes. Oh, that yeah. was terrific. I didn't get this manly physique <laughs> by not eating. I want you to understand that. And again, Central Michigan—they—they're they're creeping up on every kickoff. Unfortunately for them, they've had a lot of kickoffs to receive already after all the scoring by Western Kentucky. That's in the air, and that's at the 20. Amari Coleman will try to do something with it from there. And maybe he gets out to the 30-yard line and push the pile out beyond the 30, and flags fly. See some chippiness in the game? A little bit. These are two proud football Personal teams. foul. Unnecessary roughness, number 82 of the kicking team. 15 yard penalty. For I figured it would be on Western Kentucky because the one thing you learn, you don't get in a fight on the other team's sideline. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, yeah. Tyler Higby was flagged there. Hey, speaking of which, you know, that Miami Beach Bowl a couple days ago. Wow. I mean, you, there are football fights, and there are. That was ugly. After a brilliant college football game. It was, yep. a, brilliant it was a terrific game. Those guys were throwing haymakers out there. There's no place in the game of football for that. I, I hate to see that. You really demean the game of football. One thing Jeff Brom has to recruit, a kicker. So we should not put it all on the wind then. No, <laughs> right? no, no, a kicker. When they switch ends, they're still going to be in the they 15 They had issues 20. all season long. Yeah. All right, first down and 10 now for Central Michigan. Great starting field position after the penalty. Here's Cooper Rush. He'll be dragged down from behind. There is a flag on the play. Gavin Rocker. Had to be holding. Holding. Three center offense. Right tackle. Early. 
First right. down. Hold everything. Send it back to Chris Cotter. All right, Steve, time for Sports Center right now. Bad news for Cleveland Cavs fans. Anderson Varejao most likely out for the season after tearing his Achilles earlier this week. Cavs will now undoubtedly intensify their efforts to trade for a big man. Let's not forget Cleveland in Miami tomorrow afternoon on ABC. Guys? All right, Chris, how could we forget? Huge slate of NBA action on the ESPN family and networks tomorrow on Christmas Day. Hope you enjoy it with friends and family at home someplace warm. All right, out to Titus Davis. And they're still working on getting back some of that yardage lost. He's just shy of midfield now. Brian Shorter made the stop. I think what they have to do is get the ball into his hands. He's their total playmaker. He's the guy that makes things happen. And you've got a young quarterback in Cooper Rush. It's its second season starting. He's his comfort factor. He's the guy that he knows that he can throw the ball anytime he's going to make a play on it. Third down and seven of the ball at midfield. And they might just let the seconds tick off. Yes. Final seconds of quarter number one. A quarter dominated by Western Kentucky on the scoreboard. The Hilltoppers leading the Chippewas by a score of 21 to 7. So Central Michigan has fine field position. We come back to open up quarter number two from the Bahamas. Welcome back, everyone, to ESPN's coverage of Capital One Bowl Mania and the 2014 Popeyes Bahamas Bowl. What a first quarter it was. Keep in mind, the Chippewas allowed 36 first quarter points all season in the first 12 games. 36 all season. And today, they gave up 21 points. And a lot of that has to do with Western Kentucky's fine offense. All right, Central Michigan with great field position. Open up quarter number two. And we've got a flag to false start. False start. Number 15 of the offense, five yard penalty, third down. For the game clock operator, please put 15 minutes on the game clock. One, five, zero, zero. Thank you. And a polite officiating staff as well. Wouldn't you be if you were an asshole? Absolutely. Everybody's, ha everybody's happy yes, here, right? Everybody's in a great hey, mood. Right? What's not to like? Everything's better in the Bahamas, yes. I, I always say. On <laughs> third down and 12 now. Push back to the 45. Here's Rush. Good protection. And throws it and completes it for the first down. Deion Butler. Deion Butler. Making the big play. Terrific job by Deion Butler. Making the match for the penalty. The Louisville Motion Penalty. Terrific job of catching the football and turning it downfield. Great job by the offensive line. Making a cup for the quarterback coach. Most impressive thing about Deion Butler, he has won 11 All-State Good Works team, which means he's done so much for the community. Congratulations, that young man. Big grab for the senior from Detroit, Michigan. Gets the first down and fresh set coming up. Quick screen out to Sailor Lavalli, and Cam Thomas was a little quicker to knock it away. Cam was coming with some mean intentions there on that play. That was a good job of identifying the play and attacking their wide receiver. I would talk to the guy who was supposed to block him a little bit. I mean, he never had a chance. I am surprised that Central Michigan has not tried to run the football. They've controlled the clock all year long, and they just aren't real physical. Rush under center, and he'll throw again. They set up the screen nicely. Some blocking in front for Lavalli. And it looks like he just came up short of the first down marker. Deshaun Bertram made the tackle. That's a good call by offensive coordinator Morris Watts. They've had a tough time moving the ball a little bit in this game. Now just dump it off. You've got a great offensive line that's experienced, that can run by, that can get in the open field and make blocks. That's a good call right there. Third down and one. Two outstanding young coaches. I was very impressed with both of them. Demeanor, and they're definitely players' coaches. Stock up for both of those coaches. Yeah, I, I was never accused of being a player's coach. Watchy, the fullback was in there. You thought to get the one yard. Instead, they try to go to Courtney Williams, and he can't bring it down. Wonderful Terry 
And that's his name on the burst of it. Wonderful Terry able to knock it away. Terrific job of taking your arm, putting it around the wide receiver, and knocking the ball down. That was wonderful. Well, you, Fourth and one, going to go for it at the 19. They, they have to go for it. But, boy, I tell you what, when you're a team that runs the ball and you throw it on third and one, hey, those linemen are going to say, what in the world is going on? Brian Eby is the kicker. He attempted just nine field goals all season long. Uh, he's dead into the wind. Double tight end to the right. They're going to run that way. Lavalli, did he get there? No. He didn't get there. Nick Holt met him at the line of scrimmage. Now I understand why they threw it on third and one. Because <laughs> fourth and one wasn't much better. <laughs> oh. What a great stop by Nick Holt. We talked about him being the coach's stun. He's one of the guys on defense that gets everybody lined up and calls to play. But he can go sideline to sideline and make plays, and he can just run right up the middle. And he's going to see the offensive line pull from the backside of the power and do a terrific job of just stuffing the back great, before he can get to Great job of bad out. You know, nice job of leverage by Holt. WKU Hilltoppers have given up a, a total of 39.2 points per ball game. But I felt their defense would be vastly improved because they had lost eight starters last year and they're just starting to mature now. And we thought Central Michigan's one of their advantages. They don't have a lot in the game, would be on that offensive line. But third uh, and one, fourth and one, they can't get there. And they turn it over on downs, and Dowdy will look to take advantage. And Lofton hits the sideline. How about that, Coach? You'd like that out of your offense. Three drives, three touchdowns, almost 230 yards. Yeah, I definitely on that. I, I always said to our coaches, when we score 35 points on offense, I don't expect to win a close game. <laughs> Defense is where I would be upset the in, in all phases with Central Michigan. Sorry, Lou, the other number is 60% of their yards have come after that catch, which, you know, we've hopped on already. Yeah. So. How about 10 plays over 10 yards? Being great on third down conversions. Allen is dropped for a loss by Justin Shiroki, the top tackler on the Chippewas defense. Maybe the Chippewas are starting to feel it. That's a couple of plays back to back that they put together against this Western Kentucky University offense. WKU's done a great job of moving the ball, as we just saw. Let's see what happens on third down if they can protect Dowdy. But the only way you can defend Western Kentucky is to keep them on the bench by controlling the football. And that's up to your offensive line. And that's not happening right now, Mark. Until that does, they aren't going to win. There's third and 12. Dowdy steps up to avoid the rush. Throws in a brilliant catch at the 40-yard line by Willie McNeil. McNeil has the first down and plenty more out to the 46. It's a gain of 27. What a terrific job by McNeil snatching this ball out. Looks at the deep cross coach. They call this dagger. He goes yes. up and gets it right there. The defenders are there. They can't do anything about it, but he does a magnificent job of high-pointing the ball, going up, grabbed it with his fingertips, hauling it in for the reception for another first down. I'm not sure Tigers. who he was throwing to. There were two receivers in the same area. McNeil is now just one catch shy of the all-time WKU school record for receptions. I, I got a good chance he's going to make it. Well, Anthony Wells caught it, and then he caught a whole lot of Brandon Greer. I'm impressed by the uh, Hilltoppers' offensive line. They've done a terrific job. They've given up 19 sacks on the season, but in this game, they've done a terrific job of protecting their quarterback. Hey, they've done a great job. Let's remember, WKU's only been in one other bowl game, and that was against Central Michigan. They lost 24-21. A little different today. That was a couple of years ago. Lots of running room for Nicholas Norris. Norris is finally dropped inside the 30-yard line by Dennis Naylor, but not until he had 23 on the pitch and catch. Uh, great blocking by the receivers downfield. They aren't very big, Mark, but they are physical. You know how to get downfield. Plus, the offensive line did a terrific job of getting out and blocking down the field. On first down and 10, Western Kentucky looking to add to the lead. Pump fake to the left, and it should have been a touchdown in the middle of the end zone. 
McNeil, who would have had the school record there, can't hang on. Coach, you can't draw this up on a wet board any better than this. This is what you want your quarterback to do. Brandon Dowdy does a great job with the pump fake, puts the ball on the money. That's a perfect pass. That's got to be caught for a touchdown. Get that ball back, B. Get hydrated. Get hydrated, BG. Wide open. Great route. Great protection. Great pump fake. Great throw. Terrible catch. McNeil will try to shake that off. I got a feeling they'll go back to him on second down and 10. And that's overthrowing everyone. Got some pressure from Jabari Dean. Take a look at the latest dish brought to you by Dish Network. A full slate of upcoming bowl games on the ESPN family of networks. I wonder who's coaching in that oh, game. Oh, I tell you what, I, I'm going to be at that game. I just love football so much. I want to go <laughs> see Louisiana Tech. Skip Holtz. Coach of Louisiana Tech. Little check down that goes for more yards than it should. Allen has the first down. And really, you can't talk about Western Kentucky without talking about Louisiana Tech. They point to that game, mm -hmm. that loss in November. The Hilltoppers fell 59-10 and fell hard. They said that that was the changing point of their season. Yeah, after that, they felt they had to make some adjustments. They had teams that played them in bump and run. They went to more motion, et cetera. On the ground, Allen takes a good hit at about the 16. Kevon Frazier came up to put a stick on him. Now, when we spoke to head coach Jeff Brown, he said there wasn't a lot of finger pointings. We didn't blame anything on players or coaches. We just said we had to get together. If we want to turn this around, we have to get it done. They did a phenomenal job with their attitude. They ran off four consecutive victories. They beat an undefeated Marshall. That was a great turning point. They only put up 10 points in that game. It was embarrassing for the players and embarrassing, actually, for their quarterback. He told us that. Off play action, going back to the end zone. Touchdown. It's Mitchell Henry, the senior tight end. 16 yards, scoring play off the play action. And Western Kentucky continues to move down the field. Fourth passing touchdown for Brandon Dowdy. He had eight against Marshall. He may break that the first half. They're having their way against this defense. This defense cannot stop him. They can't pressure him. They talked about moving him off his mark. They can't get close to him to move him off his mark. I, I think Western Kentucky is a little bit more athletic. Very talented people. Garrett Schwetmong is wearing out that foot, kicking all these extra points. Ten minutes to play in the half. It's all WKU. When you can see it in the pocket like that, easy pitch and catch. With Lou Holtz, Mark May, Laura Rutledge, and our outstanding ESPN crew. Steve Levy, wishing you a happy holidays. Glad you could be with us on this Christmas Eve day from Nassau in the Bahamas. And certainly WKU is enjoying their time so far. We've still got 10 minutes to play in the first half, and it's 28 to 7 in favor of the Hilltoppers. That shows you how strong the wind yeah, is. Wind behind. Yeah. Amari Coleman. Try to give some field position to the Chippewas. For the offensive statistics are eye popping for the Hilltoppers, especially these two players. How about that, Coach? The first team in FBS history to do this. Over 4,500 yards passing and 1,500 yards rushing. Both of these young men, obviously, have had a terrific year. But I think a lot of that has to do with the change in the coaching staff. Oh, there, there's no doubt about it. And Jeff Braun, uh, the players just absolutely love him. And uh, he, he has this style offense. He's his own man. And this is his first year as head coach. And I congratulate him. They just keep on scoring in their last game it was just over a month ago. They put up 67 points in overtime that win at then number 19 unbeaten Marshall. And so uh, they're on their way to a big number here today with 28 already on the scoreboard as the Chippewas try to stay close. Dion Butler on the grab his second of the game. We sent it down to Laura. Well, Steve, Central Michigan quarterback Cooper Rush is certainly a man of few words. He's been walking up and down the sideline, shaking his head. Anytime he's off the field, he hasn't sat down. And I heard from coaches that he's very critical of himself. He can be a perfectionist at times. I mean, makes sense. He has a 3.91 GPA, but sometimes that can get in his way. So coaches trying to keep him positive, reminding there's still a lot more game to be played. 
All right, Laura, thank you. Hand off to Devin Spaulding. And there's not much there. Laura, how about the conditions on the field down there today? It's a little warm down here, and uh, I think it's affecting the Central Michigan sideline a little more than Western Kentucky. Central Michigan athletic trainers have a sponge that they're soaking in cool water, and they're squeezing it down guys' jerseys. But just trying to keep everyone hydrated down here because it's definitely warm. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Laura. When you're up 27-7, <laughs> that heat ain't going to bother you at all. It doesn't do that. At least half the distance to the goal line. Second down. I think that's our fourth personal foul mm -hmm. in the game. And we're not even at halftime yet. I think that's a lot of frustration, particularly by Central Michigan. This is a defense. They've got a lot of pride. They've got a terrific defensive coordinator in Joe Tumpkin. And they're number one in the MAC. They're not used to this happening to them. And this is a team they know how to win. They know how to play hard. They're a very physical football team. And Western Michigan University, the Hilltoppers are doing a fantastic job, not only throwing the ball, but also running the ball. And stopping the run. I mean, they, they have done a tremendous job in that area. Third and 18 after the penalty pushes them all the way back to the 13 yard line. And Rush. Sliding to the right, to the left. Now he'll step up. Bought himself some extra time. Wants to go down the field and across the middle. Yeah. <laughs> Flag comes late. Anthony Rice, Tony's kid, was looking for the penalty, and he got it. Marcus Ward on the coverage will be flagged. To me, I hate to see a late flag. If it's pass interference, throw it. Don't wait to see the reaction of the crowd or the players. Pass interference, number 28 of the defense. Penalty includes an automatic first down. Take a look. Said 28, he meant number eight. eight. Yeah. yeah, that's Marcus I don't Ward. care if you threw the flag later or not. <laughs> that was pass interference. I, I think he had him by the head. <laughs> yeah. So it gives the Chippewas what they need, and that's another first down. And, you know, Laura talked about Cooper being, you know, quiet. You always wonder about, you can, you can have quiet leadership, mm -hmm. but we're so used to seeing quarterbacks firing their guys up and yelling at their teammates, trying to get them going. You just wonder how successful you can be without doing that kind of thing. Well, he's a leader by working hard, showing his teammates how to do things and do them the right way. And the guy wouldn't say two words if he had a mouthful. We talked to his offensive coordinator, we talked to his head coach and some of his teammates, but he's one of those type of guys that when they get on him as a coaching staff, he goes out and performs well. And when you do that, that's you're a leader by an example. And the other thing is, that's who he is. If mm -hmm. you start yelling and screaming, you're a phony in the coaching staff. Also, players will figure that out too. You have to be who you are and real. And uh, he's, a, he's a real good quarterback. He just doesn't say a whole lot. Spalding on the carry there, out to the 35. Fans of the gift that keeps on giving. Heated holiday reunion and the most wonderful day of the year. This is your day tomorrow. Christmas Day. Look at the matchups. That's the Wizards logo, by the way. They'll take on the Knicks at noon Eastern. The Knicks could use a Christmas present. The Wizards are having an unbelievable season. Good for them in D.C. OKC and the Spurs at 2.30, and then the nightcap, the Cavaliers. LeBron James will return down to Miami, Florida. That ought to be interesting over on ABC. Second and two, what are you going to do? The handoff is to Spalding. Looks like he's short. Brian Shorter made sure of it. The Hilltoppers on defense are doing a great job of getting leverage against the Central Michigan offensive line. And, and I think that's key in this game because the offensive line for Central Michigan, bigger, stronger, more physical, and they outweigh them by about 35 pounds per man up front, and they're getting beat to the punch. But Western Kentucky is doing a lot of movement with their front, which uh, causes Central Michigan to be a little bit hesitant. As my college coach said, he who hesitates on a football field is lost. Gave him a good spot and the first down off the play action. Here's Rush. He's got plenty of running room if he wants it. And doesn't slide and takes on some tacklers. And he's down to the 40-yard line of WKU. 
Now that's one of those things how you lead by example. And if you look at Cooper Rush, this is a quarterback that doesn't run the ball that much. He's got minus 77 yards rushing in the game. Most of them are sacks rushing on the season. Most of them are sacks, but does a great job of advancing the ball downfield and making tacklers miss. But it's also a prime example of playing man coverage in the secondary rather than zone. When you play zone, you have people near the line of scrimmage. Not when you're playing man. That's how you can get a 30-yard run by a quarterback who's not particularly fast. Martez Walker is in the backfield. He'll get his first carry of the game, and there he is, crashing forward for three yards on the play before Gavin Rocker brought him down. Rocker, the only non-senior elected as team captain of the Hilltoppers. That's quite an honor for the junior from Georgia. He's done a good job with his hands in this game of shedding the offensive lineman and getting to the football. He's made a few plays earlier in this game. He had a sack that was called back because of a holding penalty, but he's been on the other side of the field, on the offensive side of the field most of the game. This, this drive for Central Michigan is critical, not just for their offense, but to encourage the defense as well. Taking some time off the clock. Good setup, able to step into the throw, but could not hook up with Titus Davis, Cam Thomas on the coverage there. Pretty good coverage, Mark, on a wide receiver is very talented. Not only that, the offensive line did a good job of finally giving him a chance to look not only to his first option, but his second and third option on the play. Lou, you mentioned, you know, running the football, running some clock, keeping the other offense off the field. Central Michigan was number eight in the nation in time of possession all season long. That's one of their strengths. But when you're down 28 to seven, got to get it going a little bit. And the pass out across the middle, able to complete to Dion Butler. Boy, I want to tell you, you talk about courage. Cooper Rush stood in there in the last second. Watch it. He knows the guy's coming right at him. That's an outstanding job of knowing where the blitz is, knowing where it's coming and getting rid of the ball as soon as you can to the receiver that's going to catch it and pick up the first down. Again, Cooper's quiet. Nobody's questioning his toughness, ability to hang in there. I tell you, what, somebody with a 3.91, and whatever the major is, I can't pronounce it. Actuarial. <laughs> I tell you what, you've got to be pretty smart to do that. And it's not like he's in the library all the time. They, they say they got to run him out of the football complex. He just won't go home. He's constantly studying and looking at the film, as uh, most starting quarterbacks are. When we spoke to Morris Watts yesterday, the offensive coordinator, he said that this is a player last year was kind of forced into action. They didn't expect him to play last year. He was basically the third team quarterback because of injuries and because players didn't play well in front of him. They put him in there to play. Did a solid job, not a great job. 15 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. But this year, really turned the tide and turned around. And the light came on as far as making sure to get rid of the ball, lining up players where they're supposed to be, being confident in what he's doing on the field. I enjoyed our conversation with Morris Watts. 76 years old, 53 years in coaching. Looking for it all to the end zone, and it's batted away. Cooper Rush looking for the big score to Courtney Williams, and wonderful Terry was there on the coverage. Brings up a third down and 10. Underthrown a little bit, but I think the wind's got a factor down there at that oh, end. It's really no windy doubt. down there. It's, it's a strong wind. I'd say it's a two club wind. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, golf, it's two clubs. It is. Yeah, you see the flags that are flying. So Central Michigan, they've thrown a pick in the end zone, and they've been stopped on downs in the red zone. So they've moved the football. They've had opportunities. And here's third down and 10. Rush flushed out of the pocket. There is a flag down. And Rush will loft it, and it's caught. Caught by Mike Kinville, his first catch of the day. Let's see if it'll hold up. No, it's coming back. Kevin Henry had a hold on that play. The right tackle, number 60. One thing is, when you're going down on the ground, you've got to let go. Holding. Number 60 oh. of the offense. Right Tenure there. Penalty. You got to let go. Third down. That's one thing as an offensive lineman. Once he's by you and you're going down, you've got to let go of that lock. But that usually happens because you don't have a good base. You don't have your feet under you. And that that's a killer penalty, right? It is. And they did so <laughs> much night so many nice things there. Rush right. bought so much that extra time there. 
they really the need to score here. Moving the ball, chewing up the clock, keeping your defense off the field so you can keep them fresh and picking up the big first down there. Yeah. Third and 20 from the 36 yard line. And this might as well be four down territory because they're not going to kick yeah. a field goal yeah. here. What you say is throw the pass interference play. That's the best hope you had. Can we get past it if there's a call here? Oh, they're not even close there. Way offside was Titus Davis. Third down. You've got to keep your composure now. Now they're getting frustrated because this is a team that's used to doing things the right way. They get penalties back to back like this. Coach, this is nothing but keeping your concentration. Focus on what you're supposed to do at the point when you're supposed to do it. Boy, it's so hard, though, Mark, when you go to a bowl game, you come to a place like the Bahamas, you're having so much fun, and then to stay focused during the game. It's not real easy. Third and 25, what are you going to do? And you isn't going to run that far because they were playing zone. When you're playing zone, all of a sudden you have people in the position to make a tackle. Penalties just breaking the back of the Chippewas, especially on this drive. This is a team that's a smart team around the football on both sides. They don't get a lot of penalties. They do a great job of coaching at Central Michigan. So fourth and 15 at the 30 of WKU. And they're going to go. And this might not be indicative of the score. They, they might have gone anyway. Mm -hmm. It was 14-7. Because of the win. Here they come with the blitz. Blitzing from the outside. Rush steps up and throws. And it's caught. They go for it. It's a 30-yard touchdown, and it keeps the Chippewas in the game. The one thing they said about just how accurate this young man is and how much poise he has. Not only that, what a fabulous job of one reading the blitz, the offensive line picking it up, giving him time to step up in the pocket clean, throw the ball vertically downfield to complete it for the touchdown. Here's Evie on for the extra point. The extra point is good. A critical drive for Central Michigan. Here's the flamboyant, excitable, not so much, <laughs> Cooper Rush. <laughs> The 2014 Popeye's Bahamas Bowl is brought to you by Ultra HD from Vizio. Nothing is more captivating. And a leave. Two pills, all day strong, all day long. Central Michigan had more than 55 players, coaches, and cheerleaders visit the Rand Furley home for children in Nassau. Dan Enos told us, he said, hey, you know, we got four or five guys to go to something. 55 guys showed up to give back on this on this business trip. Interesting to see the last two times he's kicked the ball out of the end zone. Now he's kicking off into the wind. All right, kicking off into the wind for the first time. And it's at the 10, Willie McNeil. And McNeil has it out beyond the 30-yard line. So the Hilltoppers will start with good field position. 28-14, Central Michigan trying to rally. Chris Cotter in studio. Trevor Maddich is going to join me coming up for the halftime report. We'll take a quick look back at last night's big win for Navy in their bowl game. We'll look ahead to the three bowl games on Friday where defense may also be optional. And bad news for the Cavaliers on the eve of LeBron's return to Miami. That's coming up in the half, guys. <laughs> All right, Chris, thank you very much. As we welcome you back here. And WKU trying to get it going and add to their lead. Little trickeration of the backfield. Taewon Taylor, the speedster, winds up with it and scampers down the near sideline for a first down. He's shy of the 45-yard line. Hey, there should have been a five-yard loss, but the elusiveness of the receivers for Western Kentucky is very impressive. Keeping that Chippewas defense guessing. All half long. 
Two and a half to play in the half. And off the delayed handoff to Leon Allen. Allen came in, ranked fourth in the country in yards from scrimmage. Dual purpose threat there. We have not had a fumble, and we've only had one turnover, an interception. That's impressive. Particularly in the bowl game, because players have had a couple of weeks off now. They did get their extra practices in, but usually guys are a little stale when they come to the game. They're trying to knock the rust off. But usually the, you, you're going to see some fumbles. Uh, but yeah. football is so important. You know they named the game after it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Dowdy able to go sideline to Willie McNeil for the touchdown. With all sorts of time, that's good for 55 yards. And for Willie McNeil, able to make the big play and get the all-time school receptions record in the process. Not only that, Brandon Dowdy just makes it look so easy in the pocket. The defender slips on this, but it's a great pitch and catch to Willie McNeil. But I've been so impressed with Brandon Dowdy thus far in this game. Oh, nothing, he's... nothing really upsets him in the pocket. Nothing distracts him in the pocket. He just stands tall all day long. He knows where he's going. He's got a very strong arm. He's exceptionally accurate. The extra point on the way. Good thing Western Kentucky did play a poor defense in the match. Brandon Dowdy, that's his fifth touchdown pass of the afternoon. And we're not even at halftime. Wow. Well, I thought we were in Vegas for a second. <laughs> Showgirls. No, no, no. That's part of the upcoming halftime festivities. Here at the Popeyes Bahamas Bowl. First time I've seen that. Looking forward to that. And you've seen a lot, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> I want my wife to know it's the first time I've seen that. Wait a second, is she, is she watching? <laughs> I hope. <laughs> but I tell you, there's so much excitement on this island. Western Kentucky will kick it away, and, and as they do it, it's a good time to make the point. People who criticize, hey, there are too many balls. I thought your line yesterday, Lou, was great. You've never been to a bad ball game. Well, I, I, I never have, and it's just such an exciting thing for the players. It's a lifetime experience. They get closer to one another. I, I, I've never been to a bad bowl, and I, you can't tell those players this wasn't incredible. I've always enjoyed the bowl, bowl games that I've covered, and particularly the ones that I played in, even though we lost a couple of bowl games. But still, you always remember them because it's something special. You get this experience, do something, go someplace you've never been. You never had an opportunity to do that. And these are just young kids that are 18, 19 years old. We yeah. talked about Morris Watts, the offensive coordinator, 53 years in coaching. You know, been to a lot of games, a lot of bowls. So what's your record in bowls? Just 11 and 3. I mean, he knew it right <laughs> off the top of Didn't his head. Didn't hesitate at all. 14 bowls, he knew the exact record. What's your, what's your record in bowls? I, I don't know, but I think I've been there over 30. Probably 30 and 0 then, it'd be my guess. No, 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 no. <laughs> you lost a few? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rush being flushed out of the pocket. Able to get to the sideline. If you're enjoying this game. Plenty more bowl action for you. Capital One Bowl Mania continues on Friday. Illinois, Louisiana Tech in the Zaxby's Heart of Dallas Bowl. Followed by Rutgers, North Carolina in the Quick Lane Bowl. And then it's NC State and UCF in the Bitcoin St. Petersburg Bowl Friday on ESPN. NC State better watch out. UCF for real. Good defense. Very good defense. George Lear's done a great job with that program. And again, that game in St. Petersburg, not to be confused with Tampa. They're very serious about that down there. Devin Spalding hits the brakes. And they'll get some extra yards because of it. They have three timeouts left, and they'll probably use them. A minute 20, and the clock is rolling. Trailing 35-14. And before the snap, there is a whistle, and there is a timeout. First charge timeout Western of the Kentucky. half. Western Kentucky. It will be a 30-second timeout. And we'll take a short break as well. I want my college experience to be fun. Diverse. And academically challenging. I want a school that impacts the world, is welcoming, affordable, and provides a safe, memorable, and personal experience. A place where my professors know my name and where I feel right at home. But most of all, 
I want to find the key to a successful future. It's all within my reach. At Western Kentucky University. Gotta be, gotta be careful swimming in the pool at the Atlantis. Because, <laughs> oh wait, that's not, that's not the pool, no. <laughs> Dinner is served. Nice. So Western Kentucky took that timeout on defense. A minute 12 is put back on the clock. Here's first and 10 now for Rush. Good pocket for him, going for the sideline, and unable to connect with Titus Davis. That would have been a tough pitching catch anyway for Cooper Rush. There are three defenders right in the area. I am really impressed with Western Kentucky as a football team, and I, their defense is playing excellent football. We knew they could score coming into the game, obviously, but their defense has really picked it up, particularly in the first half of this game. Yeah, I was impressed by Cody Cater's hair on the sideline, the backup quarterback for Cooper Rush, helping with the signals and the play. Here's Rush, set up the screen, and got it out to Spalding. And Spalding is knocked out just before midfield. And there's, uh, there's young Cater I was talking about, the senior. That's good salad, as we call it, yeah. Good lettuce there. I've never had hair like that. No? <laughs> Just a thought. Third down and four upcoming. 59 ticks left in this first half. Central Michigan really needs another score before halftime. Not an interception is what they need. And that was nearly picked off by Cam Thomas. Thomas has had a fine game in that Hilltopper secondary. They've been dominated on both sides of the ball, particularly at the line of scrimmage. It's one thing that both coaching staffs talk about, winning up front, winning at the point of attack on both sides of the ball at the line of scrimmage. And Western Kentucky has done a terrific job on both sides. They've controlled it. Absolutely. I, I'm shocked because I honestly thought that Central Michigan would be able to dominate the line of scrimmage on both offense and defense, and they have Ron Caluzzi, first punt of the afternoon for either team, and punts it way out of bounds. He was going into the wind. Let's see where they spot this. Official runs up to about the 37 yard line. I want to tell you. 40 seconds, 48 seconds. There's a lot of time. Yeah, they're not taking a knee. It's a 15 yard punt. <laughs> I can tell you they won't take a knee. Five touchdown passes already for Brandon Dowdy, who wanted to make sure nobody came close to him on the year mm -hmm. for all these bowl games. Just pulled away at, from the pack. At halftime, I think they can engrave the MVP. Well, this is an offense that three times this year had 700 yards or more total offense. <laughs> they are out of the gun <laughs> with 45 seconds left. And Dowdy's throwing and completing across midfield to Mitchell Henry, who's having a career year. And Henry, the senior, will add to it. That was a pattern there that we talked to Dowdy. What's your favorite pattern? That was it right there. The, the dig it coming across the middle. 35 seconds left. Dowdy's looking end zone. Got his man. It's Jared Dangerfield. And he's bumped out at the seven yard line. They will not take their foot off the accelerator. This is too easy. This is like practice. It's like seven on seven. It's easy. Just line up, throw the ball where you want to. Your receivers are going to catch it and come across. There's receivers have done a great job of adjusting to the football in the win. That was some throw by Dowdy, too. Gain of 35. Dowdy on the run off the play action. Completes down to the five. Down at the two is Joel German. And they'll stop Second charge the clock time out of the half. 21 seconds Kentucky. left. It will be a timeout. And Tyson Helton, the offensive coordinator, first year in the program, first at Western Kentucky, first year there. He's done a phenomenal job of coaching Brandon Dowdy. And we talk about Jeff Braun, he's like the quarterback whisperer because 
He's been around. He's played in the NFL. He's, he's coached for a long time. He knows the quarterback position extremely well, but I think the two of them together work extremely well in developing quarterbacks. They really do, and both head coaches call the plays themselves from the sideline. That's not easy. 18 plays of 10 yards or more in this game already for Western Kentucky. They're just a machine, an offensive juggernaut. And Western Kentucky's had one play in the game. Think about all the snaps they've had. They've had one negative play. And even that negative play was a whole minus one yard. That's operating offensively and efficiently up front. All right, one timeout left. They've clearly shown <laughs> they're going red zone. 21 seconds left. They're second and goal. Dowdy gets the defender in the air and then throws. And it couldn't be brought down that time in the hands of Dangerfield. But even though that's an incompleted pass, what a terrific job by Dowdy of using his feet. He's not going to run all the way across the field, but he's going to do a great job of making defenders miss and moving the pocket. Third and goal. 14 on the game clock before halftime. How do you like his poise so far, Coach? Oh, very much so. Very impressed. Feel some pressure. Won't be able to bring him down. Gonna run for it. Gonna get there. Touchdown. Making five throwing touchdowns and one rushing touchdown for Brandon Dowdy. Again, I talked about his efficiency and his ability in the pocket to move around and make plays with his feet. There he does an outstanding job. He feels the pressure of the rush, gets away from it, gets to the outside, makes a good decision here, keeps it, takes it in for the score. I think they're going to take a look at it, just make sure he got into the end zone. Hey, uh, Dan Enos. Through the field as the runner was able to get the ball across the goal line, playing for his knee down. This play is now being looked at. So while they look at it, Dan Enos, you're not going to tell him anything he doesn't know about Brandon Dowdy. He recruited him at a high school, so he liked him, knows plenty about him, uh, said he's shown great improvement, never puts his team in a bad spot, tough, takes shots, hangs in there. So again, he's not surprised with how well Dowdy's playing. He might be surprised with what Dowdy's doing to his defense, though. Yeah, I, I think so. With, with their defense, they've relied on their defense all year long. But let's take another look and see if he got in there or his knee was down. From that angle, it's close to tell. I don't think he got in. I don't know if there's enough to but overturn. it's not really important what I think. I disagree. I think it's very important what you think, Lou. <laughs> always. Oh, yeah, now you say that. I always agree with you. No, I'd like to agree with you, Mark, but then we'd both be wrong. That, that's never a healthy situation. Can't believe you guys actually shared a room here at the Bahamas. That was, that was great. Two double beds, no, you guys shared wait, a room. No, we shared a hotel. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> Different wings <laughs> had to separate you guys. Six seconds left. We are under official review. Call on the field is yet another touchdown. See, if he would have went in standing up, we wouldn't have had to review this. After further review, it is not a touchdown. The runner's knee was down with the ball only advanced to the half yard line. The ball will be placed there. Will it be fourth and goal? But the game clock operator, please put 008, eight seconds on the game clock. As I told you, he didn't get it. They've got the same angles that we're looking at and the same replays that we're looking at. Did it look like you that, that could Western be Western Kentucky is going to take their third and final timeout of the half. It will be a 30-second timeout. He was, he was not in. I said he wasn't in. But look, here are the replays well, and the angles. They've got the I same know. replays I and the same angles that we have. How can look, you tell? Watch your, watch your left knee, Mark. Right there. Okay. Okay, and look where the ball is. Where can you tell where the ball uh, well, is? Well, he isn't over yet. You see him coming down. Look, his knees down, and then you see him coming here. That Where's is. the ball? Where's the ball? He's looking right at it. He's looking right at it. Don't he says try. it's a touchdown. Don't He's looking to, right at it. That's don't, his job. Be quiet. Don't try to explain something to an offensive lineman when it has to do with the ball. He, you circled look at, the official, look at not knees the ball. Down, Mark. Because he's standing there looking at the play. That's his call. The guy is down. 
It, it is, because now, now you see him coming in here and the knee was down. There wasn't any doubt about it. He's going to go for it on fourth down. He's out of his field goal range. He said he's the guy that doesn't have a lot of distance. At the six-inch line, <laughs> he's got the win behind. All right, fourth and goal. Eight seconds left in the half. Run or throw? I bet you they run it. He's got Leon Allen behind him. They do hand it off to Allen, and he crashes through. And this time, there is no mistaking it. Touchdown, Western Kentucky. Allen's 16th touchdown of the season, 13th on the ground. Terrific job by Allen of making sure he gets it into the end zone on the second effort. Good search by the offensive line. Great leverage by the guys up front. See Dowdy smiling through the face mask? Why wouldn't he be, right? They're having a ball. They're having a blast. That's fun. You're in a bowl game, doing a terrific job, scoring a lot of points. That's what they do. It's 80 degrees. And they would never want to leave except that it's Christmas Eve. There'll yeah. be a lot of little buses leaving here going <laughs> to the airport. Well, they're, both teams are flying the charter back to yep. be over for Christmas Eve. But that was one of the neat behind-the-scenes stories. You know, they're usually big team buses. <laughs> they couldn't find big <laughs> enough buses. So there'll be a lot of little wow. team buses. Look how efficient the they've been offensively. Six drives, six touchdowns, huge plays, explosion plays like that. And on third down, you can't ask for anything more than your offense. That's super efficiency. That's not making mistakes, protecting the football, and taking it in the end zone. 42 to 14 in the first half. Who would have thought it? But on the positive note. Yes, give us the positive Central side. Michigan gets to receive the second half kickoff. <laughs> so they can spend the statement. <laughs> Well, the coaching staff needs to make a lot of halftime adjustments, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. Well, the one thing, you got to get out of that man coverage. You just can't stay with the receivers, and you don't play the ball well enough to play that much man coverage. Yeah, how would you like to be Joe Tumpkin right now, Chippewa's defensive coordinator? A lot Cold. of pride on that defense. Yep. Cold in that room. All right, it's on a tee. And this should run out the clock on the first half. On about 10 to 12 bounces, Courtney Williams does a touchdown catch in the game. He stopped at the 20, and that will That do is it. the end of the first half. Halftime at the inaugural Popeyes Bahamas Bowl. We set it down to Laura Rutledge. Thanks, Steve. Coach, six drives, six touchdowns, five touchdown passes from Brandon Dowdy. Why has he been so successful so far? Well, he's in the groove right now. He's playing outstanding. I think our whole team is playing outstanding on offense. We, we were confident. Uh, we play together. We really don't care who gets the credit or gets the ball. And that's really when you have an unselfish team, you have success. So happy with their performance, but we got 30 minutes left. You know Central Michigan wants to control the clock, but your defense able to limit them consistently. What else do you need to see out of your defense? Well, I'd like to see a lot more, to be honest with you. I'd like to get off the field on third down. We're not doing that. Uh, we have created a few stops, which is important. Really what I want to see is uh, 30 minutes left. We want to finish the season on a positive note, and that's playing hard, playing together, and getting better. So I'd like to see improvement on our defense. All right. Thanks, Coach. Steve, still intense, even in the Bahamas. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Jeff Brom, a native Kentuckian. Certainly enjoyed that first half. Set to go to Chris Cotter and Trevor Maddox for the halftime report. Some of the color and festivities at halftime of the Popeyes Bahamas Bowl. Central Michigan's been having a great time. Then they kicked off the game. And it's been all WKU since. We welcome you back to ESPN's coverage of Capital One Bowl Mania of the 2014 Popeyes Bahamas Bowl. And again, happy holidays from all of us at ESPN. One day a year I get to emulate my idol, the guy I grew up watching, Reese Davis. And I get to stand next to Lou Holtz and Mark May. We started talking about Brandon Dowdy at the beginning. Five touchdown passes in the first half. Outstanding. 22 of 30, 350 yards in the first half. Not only that, he wasn't sacked. His offensive line did a spectacular job of keeping his jersey clean. But I tell you, Western Kentucky is more than just Brandon Dowdy. 
Their defense play well. Their offense play well. They're just a better football team. And yesterday, the Mid-American Conference champion lost to uh, Marshall by 29 points. Chippewas will get the football. They will receive to open up the second half. And touch it back. Start out at the 25. Down to Laura Rutledge. What'd you find out, Laura? Well, Steve, I spoke with Central Michigan head coach Dan Enos, and he said, look, I know I'm stating the obvious. We've got to get some stops defensively and make some plays on the ball. He also said he's not surprised by Brandon Dowdy. He knew he'd be good. And for Enos, a bright spot is his quarterback, Cooper Rush. He thinks Cooper's played well so far, guys. All right, we'll watch for that. And they need a whole lot more of Cooper Rush in this second half. If you're Central Michigan, you don't not only have to score, Coach, you have to score in a hurry and in bunches and take some chances here because you know one thing, Western Kentucky's offense, they're not going to take their foot off the pedal. No, they, they really aren't, but they're putting tremendous pressure. But, you know, I've been behind at halftime sometimes by a pretty good amount. Now, what you said to your football team, hey, man, here's what we have to do. We're averaging 30 points a game, so we should be able to score 15 on offense. Let's score one on defense. Let's score one in special team. And the defense, you shut them out, all of a sudden, we're back in the ball game. You make it so that, gee, that doesn't seem that difficult. Just one on defense, score one on special team. Yeah, we get that done. But more importantly, they got to restore some pride when they leave here. But they're already going the wrong way. Loss of five. And now it's going to bring up a third down and 15. We take a look at our first half stats brought to you by Popeyes. The numbers sort of jump out at you as you would anticipate on the WKU side. Outstanding job of operating this offense. No mistakes offensively. Didn't turn it over. Not only that, I just love the way their offensive line's done a good job of protecting their quarterback. But not only that, the way he's operated in the pocket when he was under pressure. Six out of seven on third down. That is impressive. Here's a big third down conversion opportunity. This one for Central Michigan, though. On third and 15 from the 20. Rush is taken down. A couple of flags on the play. Derek Overstreet brought him down. The only true freshman on the two deep. Well, you know what's bad when you get flagged for holding. Holding. Still sacked the quarterback. Number 75 in the offense. Penalties to climb. Result of the play is fourth down. For Western Kentucky, they're coming out fired up. They can throw their ears back, pin their ears back, and go after the quarterback, throw caution to the wind. They do a great job of beating their offensive linemen one on one, getting to the quarterback. Ron Caluzzi is standing at the goal line. Kylan Towner is standing on the Chippewa side of the field. They'll have great field position for their first offensive series here in the second half. On the end of the win. The last punt was for 15 yards. Fair catch. The rare fair catch at the plus 37. Willie McNeil stepped up to bring it down. This is so out of character for Central Michigan. Holding. Number seven receiving. 10 yard penalty. First down. All right, field position just decreased by the 10 yards. Such out of so out of character for Central Michigan. They allowed some 26 points mm -hmm. per game average for the season. They've given up 42 in the first half. Well, after what Marshall did to Northern Illinois, the champion of the MAC last night, and then you see what Western Kentucky has done here today, maybe the USA Conference just a little bit better than people think. Not only that, I think when you look at both of these teams, it's going to be interesting to see how this defense comes out for Central Michigan. And they played extremely well all year long. They've counted on their defense and their offensive line. And right now they're just getting beat to the punch. So particularly the first series, how they come out of the locker room and how they play and the halftime adjustments by the coaches. But remember our meeting yesterday, I said, uh, you play man, free, have with safety. He said, no, we play zero, yeah. man. I, I went, wow. <laughs> Watch out now. Now. Pitch to Anthony Wells. Try on the left side. Halfway to a first down. Justin Shiroki able to cut him down. 
right? And we'll see them mix it up offensively for Western Kentucky. They're going to run it. They're going to throw it, but they're going to try to eat the clock up as much. But they're not going to deviate from what they do offensively. They're still going to throw the football. No, they. You know, when you rattled that off twice this year, they gained over 700 yards. That might have slipped by some people, but they're going to do it again today. Hands it off to Wales again. Brought down at the 41-yard line. Latarius Walton made the stop. I want to look a little big picture at both of these programs. You've got two young coaches, Danny Nose in his fifth year. He's done a great job there. And Jeff Brom in his first time as a head coach in college football. What a terrific job he's done and brought this team together. They were three and five at one point this season. Yes, uh, they won their last four. But I, I tell you, in a bowl game like this, and the other team embarrasses you. All of a sudden you say, you know, maybe we need to, wait, maybe we need to run that offense a little bit more because we can't stop it. Dowdy had so much time there, allowed Anthony Wales to come free underneath. I keep on harping on his feet and his footwork because he's so confident and calm in the pocket. He'll step up and slide in the pocket, but he continues to look down the field to play. He doesn't get rattled at all. Also impressive about Western Kentucky is they're just six years into their transition into the FBS in search of that first bowl victory. And they would appear to be on their way. Well stays in. We've yet to see Leon Allen on this series. A check down to the big tight end Mitchell Henry. And Henry is dropped inside the 20-yard line. But in all honesty, you got to be impressed with Dougherty. But however, I, I mean, he's like the Maytag repairman back there. I mean, nobody's around him. <laughs> Steps up in the pocket, even if there is pressure, he just finds a way to get it done. Hand it off the Wells. That ball came free. Chippewas say they have it. Justin Shiroki, and they do. A spark for Central Michigan here. It's an opportunity for Central Michigan to take advantage of this. Hopefully a momentum swing for them. They finally got a turnover. They stopped Western Kentucky from scoring. Now they have to do something with the football. Just didn't have the handoff. Ball hit him high in the chest. So I knew we should have thrown the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Cherokee makes the play. Fifth in the MAC in tackles during the regular season and comes up with that fumble recovery. Forced a couple fumbles during the regular season as well. All right, let's see what Cooper Rush can do. We're right back on the field. And on first down, they hand off to Devin Spaulding, the true freshman from Westland, Michigan. Going into this game, Western Kentucky and their defense, and their defense coordinator, Nick Holt, they were so worried about the play action. They don't have to worry about it because they haven't established the run. This is a team that normally establishes the run early and uses their play action a lot, particularly their tight ends. They can't do it in this game because they're so far behind. The tailbacks for Central Michigan are averaging less than two yards a rush. Second and ten. Rush able to step up and complete. Very close to the first down. Anthony Rice, his first catch of the day. And that's a big play for the offense. Now you've got an opportunity to move the chains. Great job. Keep it going, Central Michigan. Lou, how do, how do you handle that? You're Dan Enos at halftime. You had your doors blown off in the first half. Do you let the kids have it? Well, you try to keep it loose and calm. How do you coach that at halftime of this kind of game? Well, me personally, you don't get on them at halftime regardless because, uh, you know, they may resent you. Uh, what is important is you get to practice on Monday. Then we're going to get that corrected. But right now, hey, hey man, we're, we're better than this. And hey, we're not being fair to ourselves. We're not being fair to the school. And more importantly, we're not being fair to Popeye's Bahamas Bowl. We make a commitment to come here. We make a commitment to come and play our very best and be totally focused. And we weren't the first half. And doggone it, that's unacceptable. You're not chewing them out, but you're putting facts. I felt we went to a bowl. We had an obligation to make sure that Papa Bahamas Bowl was glad we came and we did everything they asked us to do, plus play hard. Here's Rush. Had to get rid of it there. 
before he would be dropped back at the 20. Goes as an incomplete pass. Tanner Reeves had the pressure on him. Well, that's why this is a team effort. The offensive line did a spectacular job of protection. He wasn't touched on the play. Somebody has to make a play at the outside wide receiver position or tight end position, come up with a play offensively. They have to continue to move the chains. They need that spark. But they're, the, the Central Michigan's in a position, Mark, where they're not used to being. Yeah, your offense isn't geared to score 40 points and a half. How about geared to score just one touchdown and let's go from there? Well, They've got two in the first half. That, let's get one in the second half and let's move on from there. We talked to the coach. They said we want to get a lead and force them into one dimensional. Rush drops the football. I think he recovered it. Tanner Reeves again had the good pressure. It brings up a fourth down. Once again, good coverage, good pressure. And that's just all out hustle by the offensive line. Coming back, going back behind the pocket, being pushed back, and coming back and making the play. Terrific job by the defensive front four of Western Kentucky. So the Chippewas forced the turnover and unable to do anything with it. Going to go three and out, and Kaluzi is back to punt. Uh -oh. Off the side of his foot and then some. And that football might be loose. Oh, no. 35 yards, there's a flag coming out. They give a chance to catch it? They did not give the receiver a chance to catch the ball. You have to give them an opportunity to catch it. They did not have the opportunity to do so. Hey, I don't know why we have officials. They can call from up here. It'd <laughs> so. be hard for you to throw the flag catch interference. over here. Number 16, the kicking team. Now he's 15 yards, first down. Don't you call it in the wind all the way up here? Yeah, I just, I mean, that's a, that's a strong wind, but. As if the Hilltoppers needed great field position, they're gonna get it, wow. Already up in a big way in the beautiful Bahamas. Welcome back to Capital One Bowl Mania. Back in Nassau, where it's all Western Kentucky. Among the many struggling players in this game for Central Michigan, Ron Kaluzzi, the punter, he's punted into the wind, in fairness, but punts of 15, 25, and 12 yards. For Central Michigan, the last three punts. And right away on first down, Anthony Wales, touchdown. Field position has been everything, and on first down, the Hilltoppers strike again. Nice job of execution on the left side of the offensive line, creating the scene for him to hit. He never got touched on this play, Coach. No, he really did. Very well blocked. He definitely got in. All the ball has to do is hit the pylon. It doesn't have to be inside it. Well, I'm not disagreeing with you again because I agree with the <laughs> officiating crew that was right there watching the play the last time, and we were both wrong. Uh, no, well, you, you, I wasn't wrong. You were no, wrong. No, not the you. I said was wrong. <laughs> I, I was wrong a few years ago. But Mark, I'm, I'm sure his family appreciated you circling him so everybody <laughs> could see him at home on Christmas Eve. Wow, all hilltoppers in the big way. Empty your tank. Wait till you're tired. Pass time. Empty it. Do it for D Nash. Got me. Do it for D Nash. D Nash on two. One, two. D Nash. That's right. Of course, T. Nash is Derek Nash, the defensive back of the Chippewas, serving as honorary captain. He is the inspiration of the Central Michigan Chippewas team. You see that man right there? He used to weigh 205 pounds. 205 pounds. And he slimmed down for all the wrong reasons, down to 150. And we'll get into that just after this upcoming kickoff. And with any luck, we'll get a smile out of D Nash, even with his team struggling so badly here today. Kickoff out of the end zone. Down to Laura with much more. Laura. All right. Well, thank you, Steve. And here with Derek. And Derek, you were diagnosed with leukemia a couple years ago. You were able to come back. Then the cancer came back again. Tell us about this entire experience for you and what it's been like fighting through all of it. 
you know, it's been rough, you know. I would have never expected it would have happened again. They told me that it wouldn't, and then it did, but it happened. And then I got the, you know, the, I heard about the team coming and all that, you know, and the coach. I didn't think I could go at first. You know, I was all in the hospital. I'm like, oh, man, and I was all sad. And then Coach Enos called me. He said they got a waiver for me to come. It's a wonderful feeling, you know, being here with the team. They're, they've been supporting me this whole time. It's, without them, I don't know where I'd be right now, to be honest. They bring such a smile out of you and such joy out of you. What was it like when you found out that you got to go to the Bahamas and you got to tell your teammates? When I got the call, <laughs> to be honest, I was in the bank. I didn't know what to say. Like, I was just like, Coach, are you serious? <laughs> and then he let me come down, and I, I went to a practice and surprised the team, told them I went to the Bahamas, and everybody went crazy. And it was a nice, intense practice that day. Your teammates have driven two hours down to Ann Armour to see you when you're getting treatment, when you're going through this time, you said that you don't know where you'd be without them. What does it mean to have that support, that family all the time? You know, I don't ask for too much sympathy. I just want people to know that I'm gonna get better. But they, they've been boosting me on this whole time and it feels good. <laughs> you mentioned getting better. You told me yesterday, you feel like the cancer is gone. Why is that? I know my body. This is my second year going through it. And to be honest, it, I, it's gone. I'm just waiting on the results, but I know it's gone. <laughs> I'm confident. <laughs> Thank you so much, Derek, and we all wish you the best of luck. Appreciate it. Steve. The man's got the right attitude, huh? He definitely does. When he walks into a room, he just lights up the room with his beautiful smile and his great attitude, and we had a chance to spend some time with him. And just an outstanding young man, and I wish him nothing but the best and a huge, great future. And what, what a positive attitude he has. It's just incredible that, you know, when he walks in a room, he makes you feel better. Two things at work here. Obviously, the medical condition wouldn't allow him to come to the game. The other is... The NCAA, and look, they get bashed for everything. Mm -hmm. They got this right. They sped up the process. Uh, they asked him to waive the rule about it. They got him here, and uh, kudos to the NCAA for, for that. I agree. It was the right thing to do, and I'm glad that they stepped up and did the right thing. And I want to tell you, the attitude that one has that has cancer is so critical in your recovery. Uh, Dan Enos also had a great line about Nash. He goes, <laughs> you know, he doesn't want to hear from any of his players, you know, it's too cold out to go to class, or yeah. I got a little sniffle, I don't feel like class, because Derek Nash, after his chemo treatment, he drives all the way back and still goes to class. And Enos has used that, that if Nash can make it to class, you can too. And look, he's not happy about the score, but you know what? He's loving every yep. minute of life, yep. every single day, as he should. Great to have... Derek Nash here at the Popeyes Bahamas Bowl. I, I think it's always important to count your blessings, not your problems. Uh, you're here at a bowl game. Yeah, you aren't playing very well, but this could turn out to be a positive in the long run. In the air and caught and then dropped. Titus Davis brought it down, but couldn't hang on to it. What a fabulous job of the offensive line of picking up the blitz of Western Kentucky. Central Michigan did a great job of protecting the quarterback, Cooper Rush. It should have been a reception, just couldn't get it done. But what a terrific job of picking up the blitz. That was wonderful, Terry, on the coverage there. And Central Michigan's Ron Kaluzzi will punt again. What's the average? 17? Averaging 17 yards or so per punt in this game, mostly against the wind. Got that one high in the air. Fair catch is signaled for by Kylan Towner. And Western Kentucky will take over at the 30-yard line. And there's the sticker, the inspiration for Derek Nash, or D. Nash. The 2014 Popeyes Bahamas Bowl is brought to you by the Venture Card from Capital One. Earn unlimited double miles you can use with no blackout dates. And Ram Trucks. Get more facts at ramtrucks.com. Guts. Glory. Ram. On Monday at the Roscoe A.L. Davies Field in Nassau, a clinic held for kids ages 7 for third through 13 by the Central Michigan and Western Kentucky players and coaches. This event held in cooperation between the Bahamas Bowl, USA Football, and the BAFF, which everyone knows stands for Bahamas American Football Federation. 
Good job done by all. Giving back to the community that they're playing this great bowl game in. Anthony Wales is the ball carrier on first down. As Western Kentucky will look for more. Why not go for 50 plus points in a bowl game? Up 49 14, some six minutes to play here in the third quarter. Brandon Dowdy has thrown five touchdown passes. Had a rushing touchdown, wiped out. No, it wasn't a rushing <laughs> touchdown. <laughs> wiped out. That was going to get you going. <laughs> the correct call made on the field. Darren Dangerfield on the receiving end of that Dowdy throw. Some players come together on the sideline. Little chippy. And there is a flag. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness, number six, the offense. Penalty's 15 yards. Result of the play is a first down. It's going to be first and 10. That's the fifth personal foul we've had in the game. Fifth. That, you know, I, I'm not saying they wouldn't have called this, but I think everybody's on high alert after that Miami Beach Bowl and the ending of that game. And you can't blame the officiating crew no. to stay on top of it. But if you look at this Western Kentucky offense, and, and, and how about the quarterback, Brandon Dowdy? Five touchdown passes. You know he's got a chance to tie the bowl record and possibly break it. Well, if, they, if they throw the ball. Well, they will. Look at this. Six is the record, Coach. He can tie these guys. With one more, he can surpass them. And offensive coordinator Tyson Helton's up in the press box. You probably just saw that graph. Look at this. Here's Wales. Takes a helmet down to the 41-yard line. Tony and East. But Anthony Wales rips off again at 29. A great run by Wales. But I, I still think, look at this. This is an impressive list of quarterback. And for him to tie that or possibly break that, you know, we talked about his numbers the entire game long. Spectacular. Out of this world. I think he's going to have that opportunity to go ahead and break that record. Today. Lou mentioned it earlier. An FBS record. Eight touchdown passes in a road game. That over previously undefeated Marshall in the regular season finale. But he's stuck on five right now. Stuck on five. Here's Dowdy. Little pump fake. Trying to freeze the defender. And instead, a short game to Jared Dangerfield. I was asking the WKU people, please tell me Dangerfield's nickname is Rodney. <laughs> it's not Rodney. I really was hoping. How could it not be Rodney? Or at least his nickname. His nickname is Danger. Danger? I guess. But Dangerfield, I'm going Rodney. You think he even knows who Rodney is? These no are respect. Kids, right? respect. Yeah. <laughs> take take people. my wife, please. <laughs> oh, wait, that's, that wasn't Rodney. Dude. Anthony Wales is the backfield. Looked like somebody jumped. Pass is completed. I tell you, you've got to be impressed with Dowdy's accuracy. I've never seen anybody anymore. Offside. That number two with the defense. His penalties decline. The result of the play is a first down. Blake Serpa jumped. Tim Gorski on the receiving end. Bryce Petty leads the explosive Bears offense against Connor Cook and the Spartans in the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. Number eight, Michigan State takes on number five Baylor. That's New Year's Day, 12.30 Eastern on ESPN, part of the New Year's Six. Looking forward to that one. It's going to be a really competitive game. That should be fun. Dowdy able to complete the Joel German. 24th play. The previous play was the 24th play they've had on offense, the Hilltoppers, of 10 yards or more. Coach, it just seems so easy for Brandon Dowdy. Stands in the pocket, there's no pressure. He can throw it to his tight ends, his wide receivers, dump it off to his back. There's no pressure. When you've got no pressure as a quarterback, it's easy. No, the equipment man's got to be delighted because he isn't even going to have to wash his jersey. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't have a stain on it. They second and one. They, they got to go end zone here, right? Second and one. Perfect. The spot on the field. Take a shot. Oh, he fumbles a snap. Oh, Dowdy fumbled the snap, and Anthony Wales was fortunate to recover. Let's see, this sets up perfectly to throw in the end zone. Right here, just focus on the ball. When you got an opportunity, just make sure you take the ball from the center, hand it off. But here's a better opportunity because it's third yes. in about three, so now you've got to throw right. it in the end zone. Third and three from the 13. Dowdy completes, has enough for the first down to Willie McNeil. 
Josh Cox brought him down. Coach, if you're Central Michigan, you've got to do something. Get your hands up. If you can't get to the quarterback, get your hands up and try to take away those pass lanes. I would just tell them to start the bus up here really, but early. <laughs> I tell you, if we're going to play like that, we might as well go home now, man. Everybody in a hurry to get back for Christmas Eve. And both schools will travel home tonight. Anthony Wales is the setback on first down and goal now inside the eight yard line. It's Wales stumbling his way to about the six. Bring up a second and goal. With all the accolades about Dowdy, I'm sure people at home are wondering what about the prospects of playing on Sunday? What do you see for him as a, as a future NFL guy? I think when you look at the NFL, I still think it's a quarterback poor league. You've got your superstars, but then your backups, and then a lot of teams really don't have their, even a starter that, that they've got a lot of confidence in. I think this is a young player. He's got the size, 6'3". He's got the arm strength. He's got the strength, but I think he'll come back. He may get his evaluation to find out where he may get drafted if he does, but he's coming back next year because he's going to build on what he has because he needs to get stronger. He needs to get bigger. He needs the opportunity of making plays. Dowdy hit as he throws. He was uh, he was granted a six-year eligibility. He was redshirted as a freshman. Then when they forced him to play as a redshirt freshman, on the third play he played, he got injured his knee and was out for the year. That's why they granted him a sixth year. And I think for him, just to having the opportunity of getting more snaps is going to help him down the road. He's going to get a lot of snaps. <laughs> That's one thing about Western Kentucky. He's got the size they love in the on the in the NFL, right? 6'3", 210. You know, he, uh, when you talk to him, he's a wonderful young man, but he was so close to his grandfather. Chris Cantavellos brought him down. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike, con unsportsmanlike conduct, taunting, number 12 of the offense, 15 yard penalty, fourth down. A 12 on the offense, fellas, that's dowdy. That's surprising. Uh, there's not a real place for that. Uh, but you don't know what happened in the hotel and mouthing off before the game and everything else. There's a lot, there's a lot of things that go into a bowl game when the players interact. Or something happened on the play that he wasn't uh, pleased with. It's fourth and goal. Hey. Dowdy stays out there to hold. For Garrett Schwetman. This will be a 36 yard field goal attempt. And no good. One thing about this game special teams have been a premium, whether it be field goals, kickoffs, returns. Western Kentucky unable to break that 50 mark as of now. Capital One Bowl Mania continues tonight. Fresno State squares off against Rice in the Hawaii Bowl. Tonight, 8 Eastern on ESPN. Fresno State, the Mountain West Western Division champions. Rice making their third straight bowl appearance. Start of the season 3-0. Should be a good one tonight. Hawaii Bowl is always a good time. The scenery is exceptional. The football is really good, too. We, we did that bowl last year, and it's a wonderful bowl. Yeah, did a nice job. Oh, Hawaii last year, Bahamas this year. Of course, a hard life. <laughs> <laughs> We've mentioned some of the defenders for Western Kentucky. Wonderful Terry, and there's Prince Charles, Awara. And those are not nicknames, people. Those are, the, those are birth certificate names. And even G Money Brown. That's my favorite right there. G Money Brown. That's birth certificate, people. On my birth certificate, it says Steve. Okay, just for example. Mine says Mark. Okay. Lou? I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> and each one has a story, but you expect them to be nicknames, and they're not. They're the real deal on the birth certificate. All right, Cooper Rush airing it out for Titus Davis. Falls incomplete. I'm going to get formal if you're actually checking the facts. Might be Steven. Might be hurt. Get up and walk it off. 
Tough guys. There you go. Titus Davis came in second in the NCAA among all active players and touchdown catches. He has really played very well. He had that many chances to excel, but he has. With the play clock operator, please put 25 seconds on the play clock. That started on my signal. Thank you. Titus Davis is a player that's going to play at the next level. He's going to get that opportunity. Todd McShay had him ranked late third, possibly early fourth round draft pick. I was looking forward to him running back punts today. He, he ran one back against uh, Chattanooga. The opening game for 66 yards got injured. Correction. There was a player from each team down injured. In this scenario, 40 seconds should be on the play clock. Cam Thomas being helped off. Thomas has already accepted an invite to the East-West Shrine game. He's a big physical quarterback, big hitter, had a terrific season, great against the run. Senior from Patterson, New Jersey. On third down and nine, here's Martez Walker. And he's got first down yardage. Would have been great to see Titus run back a punt, but Western Kentucky had punted. <laughs> well, you can put that in the game plan all you want if you don't yeah. get the opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Now, Central Michigan, they could not have seen this coming, right? right? Not in their worst no. nightmare nah. could they expect it to be in a 49-14 hole end of the third quarter. When you see your conference champion get thrashed by a team that lost to this team, yeah, the Mac's been taking it on the chin. That is the end of the third the last quarter. couple of days. Nassau, the Bahamas, and Atlantis, always a popular stop for the cruise ships. Moving on out. All right, a few more pieces of excellent Popeye's fried chicken has been devoured as we welcome you back. Fourth quarter action, ESPN's coverage of Capital One Bowl Mania and the 2014 Popeye's Bahamas Bowl. Why is it every time you mention Popeye's chicken, you look at me? Because <laughs> there's some on the side of your mouth <laughs> still, that's why. That's good. Here's John Bocci, the fullback. Joe Bocci, I beg your pardon. Bocci moved to fullback in the offseason. Gets the run there. So open up quarter number four. It's been all Western Kentucky, 49-14. Keep in mind, a long, long time ago, this was a 7-7 game. They traded touchdowns for the first couple series. Central Michigan marched right down the field, their first drive, three plays, 75 yards for a score. And we thought we'd be locked up in a high-scoring, tight affair. Well, it's been high-scoring for one school anyway. Cross midfield for Central Michigan now. On first down and 10. Cooper Rush going for it, had a man, and just over the extended arms of Titus Davis. Davis had beaten double coverage. Davis done a good job of getting open today and separating himself from the defenders. It's just that he and his quarterback, Cooper Rush, haven't been on the same page all game long. Davis, the third Chippewa ever to be all-conference four years. Dan Lefevre and Brian Anderson, the only others to do so. That's quite an accomplishment to be all conference four years in a row. But then again, they don't have receivers like Western Kentucky has. Oh, no, sir. Here's Rush. He'll run with it and slide down just short of the 40-yard line. Nice job of the secondary of Western Kentucky doing a great job of covering the receivers in Central Michigan. I don't like it when a quarterback slides down. I, I think a guy like Tony Rice would run the ball 35 times a game, but then slide down. But the game's a little bit different today. Mark. Tony said you wouldn't let him slide down. <laughs> oh, 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 no. No. You know, it's just... Football is such a great game. It's a team sport, and I, that's the thing I love the most about it. It wasn't about being an individual. On third and five, rush completes. Good for the first down, and maybe a yard or two after that. 
Jesse Kroll, who has a first down or a touchdown on 27 of 32 receptions on the season, gets the first down there. You like to leave this game with a good taste in your mouth for Central Michigan. Just move the ball, try to get it in the end zone, score some points, get a little momentum going in this game. This could be very positive for Central Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, after this play, I'll tell you the experience I had. Handoff is Walker running right up the middle and still going before finally tripped up on a touchdown saving tackle by Derek Overstreet. I bet uh, Notre Dame, and we go to a major bowl, the cutting bowl, first time in several years. We're hit 10 nothing. Next thing I know, we blow, we get beat 31 to 10. I had to get on the airplane next day, fly to Japan. Here's the amazing thing. In that locker room after the game, I had one player crying. That was Chris Zorich. He didn't even play the entire year. He's the only one. On that plane to Japan, I made up my mind. I was going to come back and doggone it. We weren't going to be embarrassed anymore. We're going to have players that cared about Notre Dame as much as he did. Next year, we win the national champion. It all goes back to that game that we lost. Jackie Sherrill was the head coach there, and I revamped the staff. We did some things that bowl game and violated our principles, and it turned out to be a very positive thing. Really set the tempo. Yeah, we got to a bowl game. That was great. The Cotton Bowl in that time, the only bowls we'd go to were the Orange Sugar Cotton or Fiesta. That was great, but you know what? It wasn't good enough for Notre Dame in the long run, and we learned a lesson from that game, and the same thing can happen. Uh, Dan Eno's a fine, fine coach. Here's Rush, looking for the end zone. Touchdown! It's Titus Davis. And if nothing else, the score will look a lot better in the box score tomorrow morning. I tell you, that Connor Rush, you know, he's only a sophomore. He, he's got a good future. Great job of timing on the route because he knew he was going to wait for Titus Davis to get open. He's going to beat the defender one-on-one. -on -one. Easy slant, touchdown. Now, you got to kick off. You have the wind behind you this you time. you got the wind behind. Do you onside it? Yes, it's a bowl game. I would. That's why you're not a coach. I would have gone for two there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that's a winning game. Number 75 offense, five yard penalty. Still the try. See, that's bad, right? You get a touchdown, you get a little closer, and then a false start on the extra point. Well, there's no starting count on uh, extra point. Everybody has to look in at the ball. And then when the ball snapped, is when you step in. Kickers are so precise, they work off those steps. 1.3 seconds is all it takes. And that extra point, in essence, a short field goal, is good. 49 21, a little closer. Back in Nassau at the Popeyes Bahamas Bowl. Special thanks to everyone here who's been so kind, keeping us prepared, getting us ready, and getting the stadium ready for a big time college football bowl game. And not just the game, but a big time broadcast as well. Four chances, but only one champion. The college football playoff on ESPN. Hallelujah. So there it is, fellas. The playoff system everyone wanted. We got a couple of semifinal games. Are you looking forward to one game more than the other? I think both games are going to be outstanding. I, I think when you look at uh, Ohio State, the season that they had going through three quarterbacks, and they're going to play Alabama in their backyard, and they're going to go against a Nick Saban defense that's great at the run. I think that's going to be a great challenge. The other game, you're going to have two Heisman Trophy winners. What, what, what more could you ask for? Anytime you're one of the final four, you're capable of winning it all. Even Ohio State with, uh, with their third string tailback is capable of doing it. I think Alabama's probably the best football team, but that game right there, 
Marcus Marriott and Jameis Winston. He's got a lot of pride. He, he'll play very well in that game. And, of course, let's remember this. They haven't lost in 29 games. 29 games, that's almost three years. People have been hung up on the, the margin of victory, much smaller this year, but all they do is win every game. In, in the end of the season, you know, people don't say, well, you beat them by four, you beat right. them by, you know what? You're undefeated. Right. That's the bottom line. Uh, not so fast. The alumni remind you, <laughs> well, we didn't win big enough. I, I don't know why it is. The, the, the big knock on all, he didn't win the big one. Well, what I found out is the big games are when you don't win. <laughs> if you win, it wasn't a big game. Right. But it's going to be a great thing, a great game to see and to watch those two quarterbacks compete against each other. That, that is going to be fun. I'm anxious to see which team improves the most on defense. I think that's their Achilles heel for both of them. Third and two, that pass batted down by Blake Serpa, the junior from Sugar Grove, Illinois. Making the stop. Central Michigan needed a whole lot more of that this afternoon. Plays like that. Now this this punt will go about 20 yards if he hits it good. L look who's back receiving the punt, coach. His first punt of the day. He's only returned one, and, and the, what Davis. the coach has said: if you want to make it in the NFL, you're going to probably have to do yep. more than just be a receiver, be a return man as well. He's very elusive. Yeah, we should introduce the people to Joseph Acapenti. He's the punter. Western Kentucky making his first appearance of the game. Got some pressure on him. Hung it up, but it is way short. And it drops he, about he, the 50-yard line. He, he boomed that. That was 17 yards. Into the wind. They're keeping him clean. His uniform. He'll do it on that. The 2014 Popeye's Bahamas Bowl is brought to you by Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen, proud sponsor of the inaugural Popeye's Bahamas Bowl, and Buick. Celebrate the holidays by experiencing the new Buick. With the Atlantis Aquarium serving as the backdrop, the kids just lined up to, to watch that, to walk through that area. Oh, well, not just the kids? No, you no. saw Lou. Lou was there. <laughs> Oh, it, is, it is fascinating. I tried the fish. Yeah. <laughs> Any luck? No. <laughs> Maybe you're using the wrong bait. <laughs> Martez Walker is the ball carrier. As we tick down under 10 minutes here in the fourth quarter. WK, you up 49-21 over CMU, if you will. It was amazing talking about the teams they play next year. Their non-conference schedule is unbelievably brutal. Central Michigan's got yeah. Michigan State, <laughs> Oklahoma State, yeah. and Syracuse. Yeah. Here's Rush throwing and completing. And Mike Kinville staying on his feet. The three or four guys came over to drop him. That was the only time I thought Eno sort of locked up in our interview when you asked him about the Michigan State game <laughs> next year. Whoa, 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 he doesn't want anything. Because that'll be a whole lot of pressure on him, I'm you know, sure. He Gold. played quarterback at yeah. Michigan State. He yeah. won two consecutive yeah. bowl games there as a starting quarterback. Yep. Oh, I remember. He's like, look, I want to focus on this game first. Uh, you, you think you dread that game or you enjoy that oh, game? Oh, yeah, you enjoy that game. You have everything to gain, nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. That'll get a whole lot of attention, that game. Here's Walker again. Oh, Walker wow. bouncing off some people. Wow, he took a big pop. He was swung around and then belted by Dijon Brown. That was an excellent run because Western Michigan controlled the line of scrimmage, got penetration. Watch this. Look at it. They're up there in his backfield. Wow. He's small at 5'8", at 198. He can hide behind those big 300-pound linemen. Yeah, but he's tall enough. His feet reach the ground. If your feet don't reach the ground, you're too short. Eight and a half to go in the fourth. Fresh set of downs after that fine run by Martez Walker. Off the play action. Here's Rush. Careful not to cross the line of scrimmage. And that pass falls incomplete. Capital One Bowl Mania continues Friday. Illinois, Louisiana Tech, 
The Zaxby's Heart of Dallas Bowl, followed by Rutgers, North Carolina in the Quick Lane Bowl. Then NC State, UCF in the Bitcoin St. Petersburg Bowl. That's Friday on ESPN. Lou, if you need some help with tickets for the Zaxby's Heart of Dallas Bowl, I might be able to help. <laughs> you all right? You'll be okay there? Oh, my, my family will be there. Uh -huh. We go to support my son. I'm sure. Rush throwing. Has Titus Davis open. Did he get there? Reaching across. He did. Touchdown. Titus Davis, his third receiving touchdown of the game, fourth passing touchdown for Cooper Rush. Maybe Cooper Rush will set the record with five touchdown passes or six. One thing about Titus Davis, great awareness of knowing where the goal line is. Makes a terrific pivot move here, turns in. He's being pulled back. He knows where the goal line is. Getting the ball across the goal line to score the touchdown. Remember, Davis dropped one in the end zone mm -hmm. earlier as well. Evie on for the extra point. Made 34 of 36. Point after touchdowns during the regular season. He's got that one too. Looks better on the scoreboard. Here's the fourth. For this game, can I let you know in a few minutes? What was the halftime score? 35 7? Coming up, the trophy presentation and the ceremony. Immediately following our game over on ESPN 3. The post-game trophy ceremony presented by Capital One. Beautiful trophy. Sparkling in the sun on the beach. Might just have to stick around a little longer here in Nassau. Eight minutes left on the clock. Should we expect the onside kick here, fellas? I, uh, I don't think so. Why not? Down three scores. They do the math right? Yeah, three, three scores. Who and they kick it deep. Who was right? As usual, Dr. Lou. <laughs> Never wrong. Got it right. What's that like being you? Is that hard every day? Oh, oh no, no. I'm not wrong. Hey, the guy on my right is correct more often than I am. He is smarter than I am also, I might add. For the Not record, chance. Mark is sitting to his right. <laughs> you, you can't see it at home, just so there's no confusion there. Lou meant Mark, and clearly not me. All right, here we go. Another chance for Brandon Dowdy to add to his eye-popping totals of the game. Dowdy's 30 of 40 for 430 yards, five touchdowns, and no interceptions. I, I think you're going to see Coach Brom open it up again. They, you know, he really shut it down in the third quarter. Out of the gun. On first down, hand it off to Anthony Wales. Spinning around people, very close to a first down. Can I mention the five touchdown passes for Dowdy? Only three have thrown six scoring passes in a bowl game. Connor Halliday, Geno Smith, and Chuck Long. And Lou, as you mentioned, Cooper Rush is right behind him. Get a couple more possessions. Couple more possessions. He's, got a, he's got four touchdown passes in the game. Here's Dowdy with five. They gave him the first down there. Move the sticks. Brought down the high snap. And the handoff right back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he just, uh, you know, played the clock out. He didn't want to embarrass Central Michigan. Shows an awful lot of class, but, you know, they're only down by 21. And if you're a Dan Enos, you have to be proud of your team because they could have laid down in the second half. They came back and fought hard in the second half, put points on the board, took the ball down. Your young quarterback, Cooper Rush, did a nice job of throwing the ball vertically, putting it in the end zone and scoring some points. So you've got something to build on for next season. Second down and 10. Seen a lot more Wales than Allen as the game has progressed. Throw it back across the green, and it's Willie McNeil. Here's the sixth Willie one. McNeil. Here's the sixth one. Oh, no. And he cuts it back oh. and is brought down on 10, oh. and the ball is loose. Five Chippewas around it. They recover. Tony Anise picks up the fumble and runs it all the way back out to the 36-yard line. 
Don't go anywhere, folks. Willie McNeil looked like he was going for history to get Dowdy the tie for the record. What a change of events. Unbelievable. And this is an outstanding job of not giving up on the play right here. See the defenders coming down the field, going with the play, stripping them of the ball, then recovering the fumble. That's a huge play for Central Michigan. Not over yet. Lots of time. All right, quick change. You going big strike here on first down? No, we're just going to keep doing what we have been doing. Let's get a first down, and if we get enough of them pretty soon, we'll score a touchdown. If we get it one more, now we got the onside kick it. That was a 55-yard completion, 32 yards on the return, and a new quarterback has checked in. We showed you Cody Cater on the sideline earlier for Central Michigan, mostly because of the hair. You see him now because he's in the game at quarterback for Cooper Rush. The rolling on the field is the runner advanced, fumbled just short of the goal line. The ball stayed in play, in the field of play, recovered by the defense, and returned. This play is now under review. It was definitely fumbled before the end. Yeah. That looks like a clean play to me. Oh. We'll have to take another look at it. Did he step out of bounds, Coach? No. No, no. he's in bounds. That's a clean strip. That's Joe Ostman making the strip for the Chippewas. Oh, trying to pick up some blockers right here. He doesn't After step out of bounds. Review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down, Central Michigan. So it was a 55-yard completion and then a 32-yard fumble return. All right, the people in Mount Pleasant, Michigan, a little fired up, chance to get a little closer here. Central Michigan down three scores with the football. And six minutes, 16 seconds left before. But that was a beautiful play. I mean, well executed, well conceded, just did protect the football. Again, Cody Cater, the senior quarterback, is in. Have to wonder what's up with Cooper Rush. We'll get super sleuth Laura working on it. Try to find out. Martez Walker carries the ball. And wonderful Terry bumped him out of bounds. Yeah, Cooper Rush is getting a hot hand in the second half. Doing a terrific job. But he, this is a senior. Maybe his last chance to play. Here Coach, maybe here. they want to give him a snap or two because here does come Rush. Well, that's what they yeah. said. You know, you take care of your quarterbacks, your seniors. You know, ladies and gentlemen, it's not just about winning the game, it's about developing men, and both these coaches were so impressed, impressive with how they handle their people. And talking to the players, you have to be impressed. On second and one, Martez Walker has that and plenty more. Another first down. Uh, he, he's, a, he's a true freshman. So, two things here, guys. Are you surprised you're not seeing a little more urgency out of yeah, Central I mean, Michigan? And, Coach, while I respect trying to get the senior in the game, after a turnover there, down 21, maybe got a shot to win this third. Tie it. Oh, um, the guy picked up nine yards with him in there. I mean, he can't complain there. He didn't ask him to throw the ball or do anything. I thought it was a great gesture. Handoff. Off the play fake. Rush throwing. And too high, too high for Titus Davis, who goes 6-2. Not tall enough to bring that down. Wonderful Terry was there on the coverage. In case you're curious, the biggest comeback in bowl history prior to this one. <laughs> 31 points, 2006 Insight Bowl, Texas yes. Tech over uh, Minnesota. Minnesota. I remember yeah. that. That's uh, the last game at the coach, coach there, as a matter of fact. And they overcame a 31-point lead. The biggest lead today was 35. So let's hang around for the potential for some history. There's only five minutes, 10 seconds. He needed a sense of urgency. <laughs> Here's Rush taking his time. Now throwing on the run and completing. Anthony Rice out of bounds. Clock stopped for now with five minutes left. 
Coach, what do you call here? I think they get the first down first. Don't worry about throwing it deep down. Just get the first down. Come back out. Don't take your time. You've got to hurry it up. You've got to have that sense of urgency to throw the ball vertically. Get that first down first to get the extra Yeah, downs. because, see, what they don't understand, when they stop the clock when you go out of bounds, but unless the last two minutes of the half, mm -hmm. they start it immediately after everything else set. They, yep. They've already lost about 25 seconds here. Third down and five. Rush throwing. Had a man wide open, and I mean wide. Courtney Williams out at the nine-yard line. And he was wide open. A great job of the offensive line, the blocking, of getting Cooper Rush time to throw the ball vertically. He had to wait for the ball to get there. If he can get that ball about a second earlier, he could have been gone. And again, the clock rolling, 4.20. 419, 418. Here is Cody Cater again replacing Cooper Rush. Interesting because Laura reports from the sideline. You were exactly right. Dan Enos just wanted to get the senior in some action. And there he is again. He spotted at the 12. And this time, Cater's going to throw it and complete it. And for the touchdown. P penalty. Holding. Number six of the offense. 10 yard penalty. First down. Oh. Cody catered to Jesse Kroll, and it won't count. What a That's shame. That's unfortunate. Cater did a great job. Did you see how he stopped and threw that ball sidearm? You've got to block him. You can't tackle him, Coach. No. Right here. <laughs> That's not going to work. You would have thought he had the ball. <laughs> hey, the guy should be playing defense, <laughs> without a doubt. That's Sailor Lavalli, who's played an awful lot in this football game. Rush comes back in. First and 20. Push it all the way back out to the 22. Pressure now. Rush throws and completes. Able to hit Mike Kinville, the tight end. But again, precious seconds will tick away. It's a good learning experience for Cooper Rush in this game. Even though they're behind, he's doing something. He's being challenged out there. He has to make plays, feeling the heat under pressure, but he's still making plays and hanging in there. I am very impressed with him. Uh, the problem is how they're going to replace uh, so many of their seniors that they have. As I mentioned, they returned 20 starters from last year's football team, uh, third highest in, among any of the major schools. Davis in motion, top of your screen. See if Rush goes that way. It is caught. It's Courtney Williams for the touchdown. Good job of execution by the Chippewas. Nice protection. So if I would have said we were going to go to see a college football game where both quarterbacks would throw five touchdown passes. You'd sign up for that, right? Absolutely. I, uh... <laughs> Lots of fun. Oh, the defensive backfield coaches are having so much fun. So they score, after all. Penalty hurts them really only in the clock. Lost 48 seconds. Down two scores, three minutes to play. And all three timeouts. Back in Nassau, the Bahamas. And a two-score football game. Coach, we're going to go onside kick here, though, right? Onside it now. Now you have a chance to win the game. Now you don't care about field position. I agree, kick it off, give them the ball on their 25. But now you have a chance onside it. Ron Caluzzi. Yeah. Little pooch kick there. Did he touch that? Any chance he touched that ball? Is that ball a loose ball? Flags fly. I don't think he touched it. I that, think it went over his head. Doesn't okay. matter whether it touched it or not. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a free live ball. ball. It's a live ball. The question is, did the ball bounce out of bounds? Buckle up, people. Here we go. Put 
The real thing on the field is the ball never touched a receiver. It did touch a member of the kicking team and then touched out of bounds. This is the kickoff out of bounds. Ball be placed at the 35 yard line, first and 10. Chaos avoided. It doesn't have to touch him. That's a free ball. I don't know what he was thinking. I, I, I tell you. That he tried to knock it back in. Oh, if he would have swatted it back in instead of trying to recover it. So close, there's his elbow. Yep. Look at that, you're down around the 10 yard line. That would have that would that been, been something. One heck of a finish. Three minutes to play here in the fourth, 49-35. Each quarterback has thrown five touchdown passes. Been a whole lot of scoring in, in Florida and points south, right? The Miami Beach Bowl, it was Memphis 55, BYU 48. The Boca Raton Bowl, Marshall 52, Northern Illinois 23. And here at the Bahamas Bowl, 49-35. What happens so many times, defensive coaches get too complicated in trying to stop everything and the players get confused they can't play natural football and I, I see that happen over and over they're trying to outsmart somebody out execute them tackle get to the spot play the ball keep the quarterback in it just fundamentals anthony wales the ball carry you caught that up no He's able to recover his own fumble. You mentioned about the defense executing. The offense is executed well today. Oh, the Both offense is, uh, do that very well. But, you know, you can't play with your... First time out of the half. Central Michigan. It you, will be a 30-second time out of the half. You can't play with your... The game clock operator. Two minutes, five seconds. Two, three, oh, five. The game clock. Time out on the field. Central Michigan... Won't go down without a fight. Gives us the opportunity now for today's Capital One player of the game. And it is. Correction, the, please put 215. The man two we opened up the broadcast the with, clock. Brandon Dowdy. Came in throwing more touchdowns than any player in the country this season and adds to it with five more today. And most of it was done in the first half. He had 350 yards passing and the five touchdowns all in Thank the you. first half. And he was the sharpest attack of the first half, 22 of 30, executed the offense magnificently for Western Kentucky. They did open it up at halftime. Uh, they played it very, very conservative. Didn't let him throw much. Guys, five games for Dowdy with five touchdown passes or more. That's impressive. Wow, right? <laughs> Eye-popping numbers. And you have to you, you have to tip your hat to head coach Jeff Brom and offensive coordinator Tyson Helton. What a job they've done with this young quarterback. What a transition, though. Four years ago, under Coach uh, Taggart, I think it was, they would just ran the ball, all power. Look at this. He's throwing deep. He won't complete it, but they're going to try. You know, you get the sense these coaching staffs, they're aware of the records. Maybe somebody told them it's a bowl game. Why not, you know, get down to your chance to get it? to tie the all-time record. I, I, I think that would have given him a chance. He, he deserved it. They never really threw the ball the second half. Maybe Titus Davis will get that opportunity to field another punt opportunity. For He's excited. Well, he punts into a win. I, I'd say 18, 20-yard punt will be good. Acapente is standing in his own 20-yard line to punt it away. Central Michigan not done yet. And before he puts it in the air, whistles. False start. Number 22 of the kicking team, five yard penalty, fourth down. I think wind is more difficult to play in than wet weather. The wind really has a tremendous factor on the ball in the kicking game, passing, etc. Okay, the ball is on the 29. I say if he gets it to the 45 of his own, he'll be doing good. <laughs> Had a 17-yard punt last time out. <laughs> that should be good. Acapente from his 15 now. 
Oh, he moved back. Davis runs up for the fair catch. And Central Michigan will take over at the 45 yard line. You know, that, that Two may minutes not, left with three timeouts. That may not look like Two much, timeouts. but Titus Davis on that play, that was a great adjustment to the ball to field that without fumbling it into the wind. The wind's wobbling the ball around to run up and catch that and not make a mistake. How many times, Mark, do we sit there watching all the football games and what drives you crazy is a guy kicks a 15-yard punt and nobody fields it and it rolls 40. That is what you call hidden, lost hidden yardage. Get two timeouts left for the Chippewas. Needing two scores. Rush steps up and throws complete for a first down. Dion Butler on the receiving end. Stops the clock momentarily. A minute 41 now it rolls. How many yards has, down, uh, has uh, Cooper rushed? Four. 368 Lou off the top of my head. Uh -oh, here's but he's looking for one. more. He airmailed it to Jesse Kroll, who brought it down. There was a mistake in that coverage, but what a great job by Cooper Rush stepping up in the pocket and delivering the ball to his receiver. Gain of 35. Little more urgency now for Central Michigan. First and goal. Don't, Lots of time. Don't go anywhere, people. Here's Rush. And he's just throwing that one away. You're going to get the most valuable player to somebody through five touchdown passes or somebody through six. <laughs> yeah, maybe no. do we jump the gun a little bit on <laughs> No, no, no. On no, Dowdy, 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 get the game Dowdy, Dowdy is a great recipient and a worthy one. But I also tell you this, what a great performance by uh, Cooper Rush. That was a great performance by him. It's like the auction, though, where it's a one-of-a-lifetime uh, Thing you're bidding on, then they pull out two of them. <laughs> Maybe we have a second award. Yeah. And if you match the bid, we right. have one more. Exactly. This never was seen before item. Oh, there are two of them. Here's Rush. Throwing. It's caught. Anthony Garland makes his presence felt. His first catch of the day is a touchdown. And we're in a one score football game. Raise your hand if you saw this coming, people. <laughs> You know, I, you, there's nothing worse than... Now, he was in the end zone, Mark. He wasn't down. See the difference between him and the quarterback? Gee, thanks for pointing that out to me. <laughs> <laughs> nothing worse being on the sideline and the momentum's against you, and you can't change it. Anthony Garland, where you been? First time we mentioned you today, the senior from Ferndale, Michigan. And it's 49-42. I... It would. <laughs> How about that? Cooper Rush yes. has tied the bull record. We were talking all the entire <laughs> game about Brandon Dowdy. Five touchdown passes in the first half. How about this? Cooper Rush comes storming back in the second half, and he's on the all-time record that list. That is amazing. What would be interesting is if you figured out how many points were scored going with the win and going against the win? So I was handed the statistic. Joe Sullivan, Mike Black doing a great job for us here in the booth. Said 10 touchdown passes, most ever in a bowl game. Now we have 11. <laughs> Make it much tougher for the next bowl game. Try to match this. And we might not be done, people. 69 seconds left. Central Michigan still has two timeouts. Now this is a good time. This is fun. Mm -hmm. This is bowl season. Overtime. In the inaugural Popeye's Bahamas There we bowl. go. Overtime. Setting records left and right. Yes. Setting records for missed flights. Coming up. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so what? Good thing the teams are chartering. And there is the onside kick. And let's see. Did it go 10? Didn't matter, they touched it before. There is a flag. Oh, it might have ruled uh, Western Kentucky offside.
Those guys have had kind of a challenging afternoon. I, I tell you. There's no foul during the down. The flags were mistakenly used to show where the kickers had touched the kick. However, the receivers recover the ball beyond this spot. That's where the ball would be placed. First and 10, Western Kentucky. Sol solid explanation there. I, you, I guarantee they talked to one another more than they had their families. They have all the time. That's Sailor LaValle. Made contact with that football. Well, Coach, what do you think? They run it out or they go ahead and try to tie the record with uh No, you, they're, they're just worried about getting the game. Get the game ball, win the game, get on the charter flight, and go home. They're going to run the football. They're in the I formation. They're going to force Western Kentucky to use their last two timeouts. There's Dowdy, puts it on the ground. Central Michigan will call timeout quickly. Second charge do. time out of the half. Central now, Michigan. It will be a 30-second timeout. As a coach, now you're, you're saying, okay, they have one more timeout. We have second down. That means with 58 seconds to go, they're going to call timeout. Okay, we run a play. That will be down to 50 and then 30. So, it's, yeah, we, we don't even have to we don't have to punt the ball. We, we don't have to do anything. Uh, we, we have good clock base, but we're in the East Carolina game. Uh, that was on TV is an interesting point made that it's the first time I've ever seen anybody get in the victory formation down the ball and lose the game. Uh, it just doesn't happen. So clock management, as a coach, you're trying to figure out, I want to use up their timeouts definitely, but I also don't want to have to punt this ball. Well, it turned out well. Both of them have a lot of positives to go into next season on, and both have great quarterbacks coming back. Both teams played hard, extremely hard for four quarters, which, yep. which was great. They okay. both got after it, offensively, defensively. Saw a lot of scoring, a lot of excitement, a great game to watch. What a great defense. Well, if you're watching a game as a bowl game, I think it's a great watch. There's Leon Allen back in there. Third and last And time Central out Michigan will take their last Central time Michigan. out. Chippewas can say they won the second half. Mm -hmm. Small consolation prize, but made it a lot closer. Turned a blowout it, it, into a competitive game. It's not baseball. It's not a doubleheader. I mean, it's it just total cumulative. Got it. Now, now you run the ball, and here, here's what I do, Mark. I run the ball again, and with about 15 seconds to go, I throw it in the end zone. Good call. Because that take up a lot of time for the ball to be in the air. This was interesting. We've been talking about the wind so much today. 13 touchdowns scored in the game. Eight with the wind. Five against the wind. Well, the first two were by Western Kentucky in the first quarter. They drove down. Guys, to do that with Dowdy's numbers on the screen there. But the most amazing part of that to me is the zero interceptions, right? Yeah. Just throwing a efficient. ton. Not a tipped ball. A million things no. can happen, go wrong. To it's clean living right there. Play smart at the quarterback position all day. On the this, draw. This is what I expected the whole game yep. for Central Michigan to control it. About a nine-second difference. Game clock and play clock. You're not the only one who could do math, Lou, all right? I did that top of my head there. <laughs> Didn't even get any help. No, but that, that, that's what you have to do as a coach when you're thinking about finishing out the game now. Uh, with nine seconds, I would uh, punt the ball, yes. I, into the wind. Uh, into the wind. Or I would throw a deep pass in the end zone, and that would take a good seven, eight, nine seconds. The game's over. It's got great feet. Well, you, you, you don't want to scramble. You may get sacked. Well, that's the last thing you First want. First charge time out of the half. Western Kentucky. It'll be a 30-second time. Western Kentucky will take a second here to figure out exactly what they want to do. They're going to punt the ball. Well, one thing about it, 
everyone watching this game and us had an opportunity to see two quarterbacks play fantastic games that are also going to come back and play next season. Only going to get better. Mm -hmm. So both of them have some work to do on the defense. Uh, I thought the first half, I thought Western Kentucky played very well on defense. Up there, sharp on both sides of the ball. Yeah. The only thing they were sloppy on either team were really special teams today, but I thought in the first half on both sides of the ball, they were extremely sharp. Very much so. Acapente is back to punt. If he can get it in the air, should be able to hang on for a victory. Titus Davis, we've been talking about him, is down at the 10 yard line. They'll let it bounce. And it will get back to a touchback. There's one second left on the clock. Why wouldn't there be? <laughs> now, if they had thrown the ball in the end zone, it would have been Five men in the backfield on the kicking team. This five yard penalty will be enforced at the end of the kick. All right, so one last Hail Mary. I want to congratulate the bowl director and everybody associated with this bowl. It's just a wonderful experience. I could not have been treated any nicer. I totally agree with you, and I want to wish everybody a happy holidays out there from our ESPN crew, our techs, our camera people, everybody that they don't see on television to have a happy yep. holidays because they did a terrific job here on Christmas Eve. This was a different kind of game for, yes. our, for our crew, for our staff. But it was an entertaining game, yep. and that's why, ladies and gentlemen, don't ever leave ESPN. Leave it turned on. At <laughs> halftime, it looked like me and Ross. We're trying to figure out what we're going to say to occupy the same. And lo and behold, the game breaks out. <laughs> Little international competition. The first postseason FBS bowl game outside of North America between two American schools since the 1937 Bacardi Bowl. Five days before I was born. Here we go, last chance. What are you gonna do? Cooper Rush will throw in the air and look for a whole lot of help. Ball is caught. Oh, no! no. 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 To the 15, it's lateral again. Is that still alive? That's Titus Davis, did he turn the corner? The unthinkable, with one second left, has happened. You know that thing about never leave? I'm telling you. Titus Davis is shaking hey. up on the play. Now, I believe that seven touchdown passes. Did he get in? Did he get in? Did he get in? Can you imagine? Yes. Yep. yep. Hit the pile out with the ball. We're going overtime, ladies and gentlemen. This is insane. <laughs> insane. People are texting their friends all over the country. <laughs> what put put the TV play. on. You need to see what's going on at the inaugural Popeye's Bahamas Bowl. And it looked clean. Wow. Seven touchdown passes. That was a touchdown pass. Titus Davis hit the pylon. The guy right there. They still got a successfully hit the extra point here <laughs> it's 49 48 how about trying to win it and go for two there you go who said overtime go for two central michigan is gonna go for two the touchdown is good you want to see a fantastic finish <laughs> Hey, either way, either way yes. this is incredible i applaud him for going for two this game's had everything in it. 
Look at this. Two point conversion for the win. Back corner of the end zone. No. It's knocked away. Wonderful Terry. The coverage on Jesse Kroll. And that's how this game will end. Are you kidding me? 49 to 48, Western Kentucky. This was a 42 to 14 game at halftime. No quit in the Chippewas. What a great comeback by Daniel Sospa, but at the end of it, squad, but at the end of it, right here fighting for the football. They're letting them both fight for the football. Yep. Watch Look. the Hill Choppers. Oh, I want to tell you. Oh, <laughs> how <laughs> Hill exciting going that crazy. is. And you know, it's only fitting that Western Kentucky won after leading the whole game. How, how, how devastating that would have been to lose that football game. We saw 12 touchdown passes thrown. We saw a game that was 42-14 at halftime end up with a 49-48 final score. Be sure to catch the Popeyes Bahamas Bowl trophy ceremony. Yeah, don't miss that. Presented by Capital One, coming up next on ESPN3. Next on ESPN, the NFL Insiders for all of us here in Nashville. Thanks for watching. Merry Christmas, everybody, indeed.